Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special edition of Dukes on the Pod. Uh, we are just about a year um, from the Cumberland County College Dukes winning the first ever, and with, with Cumberland officially closing and starting up as RCSJ Cumberland, the only national championship in college history. Um, we are joined here by some of the members of the 2019 team. And uh, we're very excited to, to discuss, get a first person uh, perspective on, on uh, their approach to the games, their approach to the World Series, and ultimately um, how the World Series basically uh, clinched their careers at Cumberland. So without further ado, we're gonna, we're gonna introduce uh, the players that we have on this panel. Um, first up, uh, a pitcher that really does not need any introduction. He was first team all region, first team all conference. Uh, first team All-American, uh, national tournament team, and uh, national pitcher of the year. Was drafted by the Cincinnati Reds uh, a couple weeks later. Um, proud to introduce Mike Miles. Mike, how are you? I'm doing good. Can't really complain right now. How is everyone else doing? Doing terrific. Doing terrific. Uh, next is a, a two-year starter for the Dukes. Um, local kid. Uh, was a big bat in the lineup, hit second, always in the top of the lineup during his time in the, in the Navy and Gold. Uh, Millville High School graduate, uh, all-region, all-conference performer, and uh, one of the big parts uh, of the national championship run. I'm proud to introduce Ryan McIsaac. Hey, how you doing? What's going on, Ryan? Nothing much. How you been? Terrific, terrific. Next, what, one of the one of the um, Leaders on the on the Duke squad for the 2018 and 2019 season. Um, played every position uh, you could think of for the Dukes. Uh, came in as a shortstop. Uh, played a little bit about at first base. Uh, played some innings at shortstop, and then ultimately landed in the outfield, um, playing, uh, becoming the starting right fielder for the Dukes uh, during their their national championship run. An Oakcrest High School graduate and currently a Marist uh, Red Fox, Donnie Stone. Donnie, how are you? Doing good. Excited to go through this with everybody. Always good. Always good. Uh, next, a leader in the, on the pitching staff, leader just across the board, um, just a reliable arm out of the bullpen, was a big, big part of the national championship run. Absolutely gammy high school graduate. Nick Hillshine. Nick, what's going on, man? Going on. Happy to be here. I don't know that beard, but um, <laughs> it, it, it works for you, I think. Uh, next on the panel, um, starting outfielder, starting DH for, for the Dukes. Um, just a big bat in the lineup. Time and time again came through with timely hits, I believe. In the 2019 season, I, I believe he had two walk-off hits, um, and they weren't cheapies either. They they were le legitimate drives to to against big time uh, big time opponents. Um, also had a, a huge uh, solo shot against rival Gloucester uh, for a one nothing victory earlier in the season, um, and then ultimately came down, uh, entered Tennessee, and and just had a hell of a week. Uh, played left field, was also DH in a couple games, and currently he's at South Carolina Beaufort. Uh, Egg Harbor Township graduate, Nick Milhan. Nick, what's going on? What's going on? Glad to be here with all you guys. Pretty excited. Pretty excited. <laughs> I'm really <Next>. excited. <laughs> Next, uh, just, just somebody that uh, is – is prototypical Duke uh, came in uh, as a pitcher and um, you know didn't know what to expect and, and day by day he just incrementally got better um, had a role in the bullpen had a role in the starting rotation um, and then ultimately just came into his own when it mattered the most uh, during that 2019 postseason run um, currently a, a starting pitcher at UMBC 
and uh, is a Monsignor Bonner Prendy uh, graduate, Joe Nestle. Joe, how are you? What's going on, JD? How we doing? Well, I see you got the Philadelphia Flyers uh, uniform thing going on in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all going in. Terrific. Last but not least, we, we saved for the hometown kid, um, pitcher. Uh, personally, I, I saw this kid pitch multiple times uh, in some, some not so great uh, ballparks uh, in some random places. But uh, local kid, you know, came in, um, admit, he would admit was, was a bit average and, and really just put his time into the weight room and, and long toss program and, and became one of the top arms in the country. Um, <clears throat> big part, uh, started some big games for the Dukes and ultimately pitched some big innings uh, down the stretch. Uh, violent high school graduate, current St. John Red Storm um, pitcher, also a draft pick of the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, Jojo Rodriguez. Jojo, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up, Coach JD? How you doing? Well, I'm well. All right, fellas, so introductions are over. Um, the first thing I, I want to get into is, is, and whoever wants to start can, can, can uh, kick things off, but, um, you know, now we're, we're a year out from, from all the, the excitement. Um, when you look back on the, on the 2019 year, um, what are the what are the things that stick out the most? All right. Yeah, so, ahead, Mike. Uh, ahead, Mike. <laughs> uh, well, what stuck out the most was kind of like I was new and I was new to the team that year. I just transferred in, but uh, you could tell immediately that there was a bond between the guys that were already there, and it was uh, it was pretty tight. And they kind of just like accepted the new guys in pretty immediately, just kind of by everyone being themselves. No one really trying to like act like a like a jerk right like they're trying like assert that they've been there they they know what they're doing they just kind of like welcomed you in brought you into the role like hey if you do this uh we're gonna have success we had success last year we didn't get it all done but this year we're out here we think we have the team to get it done so really just making sure everyone puts in their work day in and day out to achieve the ultimate goal yeah i'll uh, i'll go to the to the bottom five here you know you know going through what we went through uh, in 2018, um, you know, Cumberland as a program made made the region final, um, region championship game, uh, I believe, five years in a row up until that point. Um, not reaching that and, and being freshmen, um, did you guys have take any type of responsibility as in, you know, this isn't going to happen next year? Yeah, I can tell oh, you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It, was, it was almost like as soon as that happened, you like, you wanted to go out and have a practice the next day and immediately get ready for the next season. Um, yeah, it, it really drove a lot of us. I don't know if I'd say, I, I don't know if we all kind of like, I don't remember all talking about it. I'm sure we probably had our couple words in about it, but it was in all of our minds that like, yeah, we're like, we're not letting this happen next year. Like we all kind of had the same goal. You know what I mean? Yeah. We knew we were, we were right, right there with them, with everyone else. Yeah, definitely fueled the fire for next season and got us going, definitely. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine, you know, being a coach, um, you know, you kind of understand that things happen. You know, it was, it was a walk-off, um, you know, being down where we were, you know, as, again, as a coach, it was almost like, hey, we, we left it all out in the field. Um, but I can see as players, you know, you guys think, you know, we, we're going to get back there and we were – you know, one or two swings away, which ultimately we were. Um, now, going through the year, um, you know, I'll, I'll go to JoJo here. Um, going throughout the 2019 season, you know, you were one of the top arms. Um, you know, what was your feeling uh, at the start? You know, we started out at Virginia Beach and we had a really good weekend. Um, did you get a sense then that we were on, on the road to something special or, you know, you were still kind of, you know, this team's still trying to feel its way through? Uh, honestly, I don't even think it was the first game where I felt that way. I think it was more or less after the first couple practices, sure. uh, just seeing everybody really just going out there and just enjoying themselves from day one was right. probably the biggest thing and was realizing like, all right, well, 
this ain't going to be the same old year that was just last year. This is going to be something special. So I wouldn't even say it was the first game. I'd probably say it was the first couple of practices when we were out there enjoying ourselves and and just right. being us. And that was pretty much it. Now, Ryan, I'll, I'll go to you. So 2018 ended not the way you wanted to. Um, yeah. You know, you, you got hurt. Literally, it was during pregame. It wasn't even during a game. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what was your outlook, you know, going down to Virginia Beach to start the year? I mean, you know, were you anxious? Uh, were, you, were you ready to go? You know, what was the feeling, you know, going into the year? I mean, to be honest, I was ready to go. Even during, like, fall season, I was begging Coach Gorman to put me in the games and everything, you know. I just wanted to be out there. And going down to Virginia Beach, just like JoJo said, like, I knew we were – the first practice of the fall season, I knew we had something special. We had some good kids coming in, seeing Spath play, seeing Amicelli throw hard. Just all the freshmen coming in, I knew coming into that season it was going to be some, something different than we were – we're going to go farther than what we expected right. than we did back in uh, 2018. And, you know, it finally got us a national championship at Cumberland. Absolutely. Um, next, I'll, I'll go to, to both Nick's here. So both of you dealt with some injuries to start the year. Uh, oh, yeah. Obviously, you, you know, Nick Hillsheim, you know, it was, it was off and on, um, you know, basically how you felt. Mills, um, you were flat out, just out. Um, you were in a, you know, it was just a, a freak accident in the weight room. Um, I'll start with, with Nick Hillsheim. Um, you know, what, what were your internal feelings going into the year, you know, dealing with it? And, and, you know, you hear all these guys talk about, sounds like all of you knew we were on the road to something special. So um, what was that internal battle for you um, dealing with all that? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I wanted to be there for the guys, no matter what way. Uh, that was just cheering them on. I just wanted to win. So that was just my right. mindset all year. Got it. Mills, I know you, you and I, and, and I think you and Coach Freund and a couple other coaches were were digging into you about, um, you know, again, uh, now looking back, you know, I want to say we were right, you know, yeah. stay off the foot because we're going to need you oh. later. Um <laughs> But it looked like you were, you know, ready to go. And, and again, amongst the coaches, we weren't angry with you. Um, yeah. We were just more, um, hey, we're going to need you later in the road. But it looks like you, you were having some trouble dealing with it um, going into the year. Yeah, so I remember in Virginia Beach, uh, the first game, there we were taking BP. And I was still on, I was still on my foot. I just got off the boot, but I right. still couldn't run on it yet. And I was uh, I was shagging out there, and I remember you guys yelled at me like, "What is he doing?" Yeah. Like, he's, like I don't know. I I think the way I I coped with it was just like trying to, you know, act like it wasn't there, and you guys would kind of get mad at that. <laughs> but, uh, but no, but no, it was um, it was tough at first because I knew we were gonna be, we I knew we were gonna be a great team. I knew we had good guys coming in, and I was just way too anxious you know sure. now we, we we all understood it was just we had it we had you know we were looking three months down the road versus uh, <laughs> game two against brian stratton yeah. <laughs> so so donnie i mean you you know a lot of folks would consider you the, the elder statesman um on the team i i think you played in every inning in 2018 and and um i'm pretty sure you played almost every inning in 2019 so um most folks will take you as the de facto leader. I mean, what what were your feelings going into into twenty nineteen? I, I know you said you were you were ready to go after that, you know, that 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 hurtful loss in, in the playoffs last, the previous year. Um, but ultimately it's a long road. So what were your thoughts going into, you know, obviously the fall and then starting up the spring? Yeah, um I try to keep a little bit more of like a level mindset. Just I try to I feel like that's kind of my role on the team is to not really get too excited or, or too down about anything. And uh, I could see right away how, how talented we were. And I was so excited to get on the field in, uh, in Virginia Beach just to see what we would look like in real games because the amount of talent we had was, was unbelievable. And it was almost uh, – it, it was like a, a team that I'd never even been a part of before. It was it was insane to think that I was even playing on it, but it was it was really exciting just to see us on the field against another team. Cool. 
All right. Well, 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 before we get into, you know, the, the games and everything, I, I want to close up with, with Joe uh, Nestle here. So Ness, I mean, you coming in, you, you made huge strides, um, not just velocity wise, but just, you know, how you carried yourself, you know, on and off the field, um, you know, again, making strides, you know, doing um, not, not just what the coaches were asking for, but some, some extra work as well, really trying to hone in your craft. Um, you know, we, as coaches, I, I don't think we were sure where you're going to end up, starter, reliever, um, you know, starter, or closer, where are you going to be? Um, and I imagine you felt that as well. Um, and, and then you had some some rough patches throughout the year, but ultimately, I mean, we're going to get into it in a little bit, but, man, you, you, you became basically a superstar at the end there. Um, tell me about what your approach was going into the year. Um, I guess, I don't know if you were unsure on what your role was going to be, but, you know, ultimately the way you finished, obviously there was some drive there. So, you know, what were you, what were your thoughts going into the year? Um, going into the year, I kind of like, like the ultimate goal was obviously like to be the best pitcher on the team. Like that's where everybody is, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, um, and that's, it didn't really matter more so when the year started of what role it was. I kind of just mm -hmm. wanted to perform. And um, I really just sat back and kind of was like, you know what? Mike's having success. JoJo's having success. Success. Ant's doing well. Like, what are these guys doing that I'm not doing? And I just took little bits and pieces from all these guys. And just honestly, I had a talk with Bromley in, uh, in my apartment one day. And uh, we he was like, dude, like, just don't care about anything for once. Like, just try not caring. <laughs> and I was like, nah, dude, screw you, whatever. Like, I don't care about that. Like, whatever. Right. I, I, I care too much about this game to not care. Right. And he's like, nah, dude, just try it. So over a little bit, I just, like, I took his advice, and it kind of helped out, man. Sometimes you just got to not care to have fun. Just have fun. And it just works. And, like, it just started all coming right. together. Well, I appreciate that mindset personally um, because you not caring. Uh, no, 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 you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> no, you just gotta have fun sometimes. Yeah. That's <laughs> just don't be so tight. That's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. No, no, it definitely helped. So um, it looks like it's helping you down at UMBC as well. I know you were having some success down there before everything kind of closed up shop for the year. So, um, speaking of which, I mean, um, you know, we'll kind of just leave this as an open forum. I mean, what, what how are you guys dealing with? with everything, you know, obviously I, I felt like a lot of you guys were, were on a pretty good run, um, you know, in, in your lives, whether it be on the field or off the field. Um, how are you guys coping with it just in general? Uh, See a lot of people shaking heads. Not much. <laughs> not much. Yeah, it's definitely tough. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready for it to be over. I hear you. I hear you. Um, it looks like we've got some light at the end of the tunnel. I know you. Uh, Governor Murphy kind of opened things up a little bit, but um, we'll see what happens. I mean, have you guys, um, you know, I'll start, I'll, I'll go to Donnie. This was, this is kind of off script, but um, have you gotten any direction, you know, Donnie and, and Joe, 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 um, from the NCAA Division One level, um, any direction as to, hey, we're going to be back in the fall or, or anticipate some delayed openings? Yeah, no, we haven't. Uh, I know Maris, they delayed their room selection process for housing in the fall. But other than that, like NCAA-wise, we haven't heard much other than they expect us to get another year of eligibility. But right. no one really knows how it's going to work yet. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, pretty, pretty much the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Pretty much the same thing. But uh, everyone's plans is to go back in the fall. But right. I'm not too sure with all the social distancing and all that stuff. So. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll go open it up to the rest of you guys, like NAIA, you know, Ryan, you're at Rowan. Um, I, well, actually, Ryan, I've been chatting with your AD, so. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's, I mean, it, you know, Nick, you might, feel, it sounds like everybody's just trying to start on the same same schedule. Um, I don't know if you've gotten any direction as of yet, but. So my, my school, I think what we're doing is we're doing face-to-face -face in the fall, mm -hmm. but they're, they sent us an email saying that they're predicting like another spike in the virus right. during like the flu season. So they're saying 
uh, after Thanksgiving break, we're just going to go strictly online until the spring. So we only know up until Thanksgiving break, or winter break, rather, that we're just going to be online. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We're, we're uh, at, at least at Cumberland, you know, it sounds like we're pretty much all in the same boat with, with everyone. Yeah. Um, I'm just not sure. But I, personally, I feel like everything's going to change in like a month. Like everybody's just yeah. going back. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. All right. So, fellas, uh, you know, throughout the year, you know, we, we ended the year, um, you know, I, I believe we were uh, 38 and three or 40 and three. Um, five. Some, going into the playoffs. Yeah, we were 43 and five to end. But, um, uh, you know, at the, at the end of the year, you know, we were on an incredible run. Um, you know, a huge streak. Uh, I think we won 31 in a row at one point during the year. Um, and then, you know, we hit the playoffs. And I, I thought we were, we were, we were going to, I'll be quite honest, I thought we were going to steamroll some teams. Um, so we started out against Ocean, um, you know, Mike and JoJo, you guys did your thing in that series. Um, I'll, I'll go to you two, um, Mike, JoJo, a- after that opening series, um, what were your feelings, you know, heading into the region final four? Um, were there some kinks in the armor that you felt? Um, or did you feel like, hey, we're, we're going to, we're going to run this thing? I'll start with Mike. Personally, after that first game, I thought I thought we were going to run it. I I didn't see like anything stopping us. It been we played that way, the same way we, way we played all year. But uh, I mean, you can't really have the mindset anyway that we didn't play great, so we should worry. Right. So we got to have the same mindset no matter what. Like, hey, we're going to steamroll this because if you don't have that mindset, that's that's when you get ran over. Right. Jojo, same thoughts. Or you, you felt a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Mike set the tone game one. Uh, game two, I was like, all right, it's time to shut the door. Let's get it rolling. Like, this is what we've been waiting for all year. Right. Uh, we shut the door game two. And then, um, you know, after that, I was like, I was like, oh, yeah. like, it's real now. Like, right. Like, it's real. Like, I, I can I can taste just the championship in our mouth already. And it's just like, you know, yeah. Right. So after, the, after, the, after the first two games, it was, it was nuts. I was like, all right, let's go. So, so after that series, you know, we're, we're back in the region final four. And, and, you know, when we started this little discussion here, um, it sounded like everybody was, you know, ready to get back there as soon as, you know, we, we lost that game. So now we're back. Um, I'll, I'll start out with the Nick Hilsheim and, and Joe Nestle. Um, going through what we did the, the year prior, you have to know that, you know, it's going to take a lot more than, you know, Mike and JoJo. Um, you know, performing well. At some point, you guys were going to get the ball. So what were your thoughts, you know, going in? Were you guys – obviously, you guys were prepared, but um, what were you expecting um, going into that um, Final Four? Um, I, was ex- I wasn't I was really sure, again, what my role was at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was ex- expecting, like, if I get called on, you just got to perform, you know what I mean, and just do your part. Um, but yeah, I, I really wasn't sure what was going on. I saw we were winning, and I was like so hyped about it. So I mean, whatever, whenever I got called, I just gotta show up. Yeah, I knew it was gonna be a dogfight, no matter who we played. Um, everyone was a good team, so we just had to be ready. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. So you know, we we go into Brookdale. You know, Mike Mike throws another gem, and and um, you know, then then we face you know our our rival you know, the, the road runners. So, um, you know, I'll go to, to the three uh, position guys here, Nick, Donnie, and, and Ryan. Um, going into that game, what, what, was, what was the mindset? Um, again, you know, th- this is one of our, one of our rivals. So, um, Ryan, what, what were you feeling going into, that, going into that game? I mean, I knew it was going to be a dogfight because the first time we played on, we got all the way, what, to the ninth inning and then yep. no hand hit the walk-off home run. And then the second time we played them, we lost seven to five. I think I remember that game. Yeah. And so, and then coming, I think this was going to be the third third time we played them. Was this the game that we lost? What? 20 yeah. Yeah, was we, that got, the one? we got handled. Okay. So I, I knew it was going to be a dogfight throughout the entire thing. And then all of a sudden, like, my mindset was just stay focused, you know, 
uh, try to reach the goal that we're trying to achieve. And then, you know, they just kept hitting and hitting and it just seemed like we couldn't get an out. Right. It, it wasn't, it was kind of a little bit defeating because all that work we put in, we'd never thought we'd lose what 20 to one. Yeah. So, you know, go and it was kind of just a little bit defeating, but of course then we got the at large bid and right. the rest is history. All right. Mills, Donnie, do you, do you have anything to add to that in, in regards to going into that game? Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect it to be that score at the end of it. I thought it was going to be another dogfight, like Ryan said. But yeah. um, they just kept hitting balls through the 5-6 hole. And uh, then they started, you know, I don't even know. Honestly, <laughs> the, I forget so much about that game. Right. The only thing I remember is uh, I think someone hit a home run and I hit the fence and I was just like, oh, yeah. I was just so mad, but um, yeah, I think we got them back. All right, Donna, you got anything to add to that, or they pretty much yeah, nailed it? Going into that game, I know everyone was excited. We were getting to play them at home. I don't remember how that ended up happening, but we got to play them at home. We're excited to go, and then like Ryan and Nick said, I don't remember much from the game. It's just no. that game was like a blur. Look up, and it's twenty to whatever, and you're like, what happened? Right. But it was just one of those days where everything they hit fell like nothing we couldn't do anything right now i you know not to to keep going I, I just felt like we never got a chance to get off the mat um i, I feel like if they if they took a break <laughs> they took a break i felt like we were gonna you know we had the, the firepower to catch up and i you know you know, had to i get think to that, the, they didn't take a break so. i think though like that we kind of we kind of needed that though you know we we kind of needed that to like going into Tennessee, like that game right there, you know, keep a little bit of taste in our mouth. All right. So Mills, you, you got into it. So, um, you know, before, before that though, you know, obviously we, we got tripped up, you know, the, the day after um, against yeah. Brookdale and ultimately um, we needed to get the at large bid to go to Tennessee, um, you know, and uh, you know, so I'm going to, I don't know if you guys saw that video, you know, when we were, we were the at-large team, um, you know, sitting in the team room there, um, you know, what, what was, you know, sitting in that room, you know, it was, I think we all were kind of excited. You know, we were all fighting some internal feelings like, Hey, we deserve it. Um, but what kind of threw a huge wrench into the whole situation was, um, Brookhaven College uh, defeated Tyler Junior College in their regional tournament. And now you've got us. Um, you know, we've been there two out of, two out of the three years. Um, number one team in the country. But then on the other side of it, you've got Tyler, who was, had been in the national championship five years in a row and won four of them. So um, – knowing the situation and then ultimately sitting in our, in our team room, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go to Donnie cause his face kind of pops up in, in that video and, you know, we'll, we'll obviously play it, um, you know, once we get all this stuff edited, but, you know, Donnie, what, what, what was the feeling just going to campus that day, let alone sitting in that team room waiting to find out? Yeah. No, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever experienced anything like, waiting to see if we're going to make it and you know when we finally heard it wasn't even excitement that I had it was it was a lot more relief than excitement because I I felt like we earned it and all we needed was a chance to go there so I I was past being excited it was it was more of relief okay now let's we get to practice more we get to play more let's go good stuff good stuff I hate to hit the pause button but uh Fellas, Coach Freund is in the chat. Coach Freund is in the chat. <laughs> let me, uh, let me. Where's he at? Uh, oh, wait. Where's the turkey sandwiches? Hold on, let me. Uh... <laughs> sandwiches. Need them. Mike, Need them. Coach, excuse me. Coach Freund, how are you? Very good. How's everybody today? What's Co- up? Coach. Uh, I'm great. <laughs> uh, so, Coach, we're, we're just starting up. We, we kind of went through the year. Um, piece by piece, but now we're we're at, we're at the point where we're talking about sitting in the team room um, for the at-large bid. So, um, I mean, coach, since we got you on here, um, you know, the situation was was kind of was kind of tricky. 
Um, you know, obviously you have us, number one team in the nation, you know, number team for almost two months out of the season. Um, but then on the other side, you've got Tyler Junior College, again, five straight national championship games, four titles. Um, what, what was going through your head there, um, you know, as we went into the at-large day? Well, uh, a couple things. Uh, I, re I remember going home after that weekend of the uh, regionals and uh, talking to my wife like two days later, <laughs> literally after not talking for two days. And uh, I was mentioning stuff about, you know, and she said, well, what did the other coaches said? And I said, well, we didn't really talk about it. She said, well, you guys were up in the tent for like two hours. What'd you talk about? I said, nothing. Nothing. We sat in the tent and discussed nothing. <laughs> But yeah. when I when I talked to Coach Gorman on like Wednesday or Thursday morning, uh, I told him I wanted no parts of it really. I said I don't you know after after the way that weekend shook out, and then when I came around to 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 th Wednesday or Thursday right before I'd spoken to him, I said why not us? Who right. who had a better resume than us? Right. We beat every. We beat every team in our region. We had a one bad weekend. And are they going to use that to hold us down? And right. Said, and and, and who, who are they going to put in front of us? And I said, Coach Freud coming with some fire. Um, so, I mean, guys, look, look, I'll, I'll pick out some more faces that, that kind of stuck out to me in that video. So, Mills, you were pumped. Um, yeah. Go through your, your thoughts again, going, going on the campus that day, not knowing what was going to happen, then ultimately – you know, getting the so I remember me, Tyler, and Vinny were just talk. We woke up early. We were talking about it all morning, and we were like, "Oh God, like what's it gonna be?" And um, mm -hmm. we, I was just nervous, you know, like because I didn't want to stop playing with this team. I mean, it was just it was too good of a team. I loved every, I loved everybody. Um, and then mm -hmm. once I got in there, like Donnie said, it was just relief. You know, I was nice. just like a breath of fresh air like we get to play more we get to go to practice tomorrow you know right. just playing with the group of guys that you know I love for another two weeks was it yeah 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 I'll leave I'll open it up guys you know the guys that haven't really chimed in yet like what what was going through your heads and, and ultimately again once you got the news what was the feeling yeah, man, I was just – I really was just relieved. I uh, It's the same thing, man. I was just like, I don't want to play with these guys again. I don't want to keep going. Right. Uh, but it was kind of like I, – I don't know if I'd say excited. Yeah, I mean, obviously I was excited, but, like, I was just like, let's let's get to it. Like, let's, right. get, to, let's get down to it. Yeah, I was thinking – go ahead, Mike. No, right, you go ahead, go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> I was thinking, like, this is it or we go there and win. No, uh, there's no in between. Gotcha. I, did, I thought we had something to prove once we got that at large bid. Like sitting in that room, we knew every every one of us knew we were the best team in the nation at that point. There was no question about it in our minds. And we had played like that all year. We had we had one fluke of a weekend. Right. And it happens it happens to everyone. I mean, we ours just happened at the worst time possible, but at the same time it happened at the best time possible because it lit a spark in us and we had to prove like, Hey, we got this for a reason. So right. we had that extra motivation going to Tennessee, especially with, uh, you know, us getting the last choice of the hotel, especially having to walk through a <laughs> yeah. 50 degree sauna <laughs> to our rooms every day. <laughs> right. Tono Lodge. <laughs> Tono Lodge, baby. Yeah, exactly what uh, yeah. Coach Warren said. Uh, well, we were 38 and five or 42 and five. Yeah, some was, yeah. And Good we luck. had a 31 game uh, winning streak. Why not us? You know, right. we put everything out there. And, you know, that we had, what the coach Warren said, we had a great resume and exactly why not us going in there. I was a little nervous, but once we finally got it, it was, it was time to get going. And, yeah. Cool. Man, I, I still get the chills thinking about it. Now, this whole conversation, I'm just sitting here and I just keep getting the chills. It's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so you know we we get the at large and and obviously you know it, it's it's almost like a sprint you know we didn't really have a chance to to kind of game plan like we got the news two practices and we were on the vans going to Tennessee um you know 
going into that first game. So um, we literally had the first game of the World Series, you know, 10 a.m. start. Um, you know, I think I think you all heard me kind of complaining, or not really complaining, but excited that we we're playing in the morning because I hate night games. So it, it kind of gave us, in my opinion, gave, gave us a chance to just wake up, BP, IO, didn't have a chance to think about the game. And, um, you know, we, we got right into it. So, um, Mike, you were the starting pitcher. You know, again, what, what, what's your mindset going in there? Uh, I'm going to be honest. It was probably the, the first time I'd had some nerves running through me for a right. game in, in a long time. I mean, especially because throughout my high school career, I'd lost two state championship games. So I had that right. feeling in me. And I didn't want it again. I wanted it so bad in the first inning. I was a little too anxious. <laughs> So uh, you kind of saw on the first play of the game, the guy bunted on the first pitch. And uh, <laughs> yes. I, fell right on, I fell right on my rear end right. uh, going to field that ball. Uh, but after that first inning, me giving up that run, uh, the guys kind of settled me down and said, hey, you've been doing this all year. Just go out there and do what you've been doing. Try not to overthink it. It's just another game. And uh, kind of just settled in from there and, you know, 11-1 gotcha. to one victory. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it the way it played out, I mean, I'm, I'm going to bring up, um, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> the, um, the box score here and almost everybody scored a run. I think eight of the nine offensive players uh, scored at least one run during the game. Um, you know, you guys can, can either shoot me down or, or, or pump it up. I mean, were, were you guys just waiting to just, explode after what we went through during the regional tournament or was this just a natural like hey this is what we do no i think it's what I we think did we were really, i mean i know speaking for myself i wanted to put up a million runs that game especially since we had the first game of the world series we were setting the tone for everything that was going to happen after that um, right. i mean 11 runs is good but i know everyone wanted to put up as many as they would let us Personally, I think we uh, left a lot of runners in scoring position, but we'll just move <laughs> past that. We'll move past that. Um, Mills, I mean, what, you know, Mills and, and Ryan, you know, the hitters, um, you know, is Donnie on point there? Did you guys just, again, was it, you know, let's let's try to run run this thing up or, you know, let's just play our game and 11 runs just happen? Um, I feel like it was both, like it was a little bit of both. Like that was what we did all year. That was the type of team we were. But then again, like losing as bad as we did, you know, it kind of fueled the fire for what we were going to do in the playoffs. And it kind of, it, like Donnie said, it set the tone for uh, the rest of the series. So, right. I think um, during the year, little by little, we we knew that we had the capability of doing that. But I definitely think after losing by 20, that you know we were kind of like all right that's enough like let's let's all turn it up and we knew if we all turned it up one through nine that nobody was going to beat us so that's what we did I mean it, it was it was pretty impressive um again we had that you know Mike kind of alluded to it possibly some first inning jitters a little bit but I mean it was a complete onslaught um you know and uh you know, before we close it up, I'll just I'll just play the the highlights for you, and um, trying to get the audio to work, but um, it's it's not working. So, uh, I mean, is there is you know just again just getting the feel for everything here? Um, it's pretty impressive. It's Ryan. A great eye right there, right? <laughs> no, that was actually a hit and run, and I I swore uh, Gorman, uh, Coach Gorman was gonna ring ring me another one after that, so it actually worked out. I uh, I hit this ball off the floor, literally off the deck. <laughs> <laughs> Went through. I think he was playing ridiculous double play depth, like he was up right. the middle. Lutz, Lutz just hits bombs. That's all it is. Yeah. And Lutz, <laughs> hey, but if Lutz was there in there, he goes. If Lutz was in here, I would ask him what he what his mind was going through, <laughs> honestly, through that whole tournament. He was he was on some Wheaties. <laughs> yeah, here's a <laughs> – We can just skip this one. 
<laughs> oh yeah. I think of course. <laughs> and it's right down the middle, bud. Goosh. Yeah. It highlights your ability to throw a ball straight as an arrow to a specific Listen. spot. This if one Quez, happened. if Quez was like if Quez was like two inches taller, he catches it. <laughs> well, we're out in there in five and it was like 105 degrees out. I loved it. Oh yeah. Uh, that was amazing. Was so hot. So that that's that's the end of that one. I mean, so Mills, it sounds like you're getting into it. Um yeah. You know, I coach coach Freund, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, we're about to admit some of the coaches here. Uh, coach Ryer just joined. Um, Uh-oh. Coach, I, I think I think we were having a discussion on we needed somebody to uh, kind of step up and uh, somebody I don't call it extra, but we needed somebody to step up and it, I think it was Lutz. Um, yeah. So Guys, what what do you think about Lutz's week? Um, obviously, we just got into game one, but that whole week for Lutz was, in my opinion, career changing. Yeah, he was dialed in. Dialed yeah, in. I, I don't know if I've seen someone so locked in, like, from, I don't know, every pitch of the AB, every pitch, right. like, every pitch he was like, locked in. If you know, if you know Lutz, he, he's like a, <laughs> he's a pretty quiet kid, right. but um, – when yeah, we seen that whole tournament there. just just went, especially when he hit that that one home run, the first one in the night game. Right. I just saw his face, and he was just – I've never seen someone so locked in in my life. Me and to, uh, like, yeah. Like, seriously, my like, roommate. Yeah, like, yeah. it was like, oh, my God, Lutz, what? you are <laughs> there right now. Like, I'm not going to get in your way. <laughs> We were in the room with him down in Tennessee, and it was me, Mills, and Lutz, and he was just locked in the whole weekend, man. He just – he had was, one goal. It seemed like he just wanted to win. Was was Lutz's performance surprising, or was it um, like you guys knew he had it in him all along and he just needed an opportunity? We knew. Yeah. yeah without a doubt, we knew. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we knew. fellas. Um, before we, we move on to the next game um, – let us welcome the 2019 National Coach of the Year, uh, Keith Foreman. Ah, what's up, coach? What's up, boys, <laughs> what's going on, kids? How's everybody doing? You guys look great. Doing good. Great. Quarantine. Good. Everybody, uh, everybody, uh, healthy and safe. Yeah. Yeah. For the good. most part. Yeah. Uh, coach, good, good. While, while we got you on here. Um, you know, we're going to have a, a separate chat with, with just the coaches, but um, since you're here, um, you know, we kind of went through the whole year and, you know, obviously we, we spoke about the region tournament and, and then the day that we received the at-large bid. So, um, you know, at the beginning of the 2019 season, uh, right, excuse me, let me back up before that. Uh, you know, we started this thing out talking about that last game in 2018. And how all, all pretty much it seems like the entire roster was ready to get going um, as soon as that game was over. Um, did that night kind of fuel everything, or was this a hey, 2019 is just a new year? We're going to keep it business as usual, or was it that something that was always in the back of your mind throughout the 2019 season? Are, are you in your you're talking about the last game in 2018 right, right. yeah I, I mean I you know if you look at all the guys that were in that game um ton of guys that are on this call right now as freshmen um I think we all learned a lot of things and you can't replace experience in baseball and um that experience as awful as it was in, in 2018 and and boys you guys remember how long of a day that was I think it started at 4 a.m yep if not if not earlier, and ended with a, a you know, a walk-off uh, home run and a great game, you know, to our rival. Um, it was a long day. It was emotionally draining, physically draining. Um, I know I didn't want to experience that again. Um, and uh, so, you know, I think in, in baseball, when you have experience and you have tough-minded guys like we did, um, you know, I, I think it fueled them. I don't know if it was in their their minds on a daily basis, but I – I, I certainly think that the that feeling they didn't want again and they had experienced it and were better for it. So, um, I, absolutely, I think it was it was a piece of the fuel. Nice. 
Um, also joining us fresh um, off or fresh, freshly started, whatever the wording is, um, after a 42 year career, we've got Coach Ryder on the chat. So we're, we're glad that um, he's able to work out the technological issues. And here he is. Uh, Coach Ryder, how are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm totally working. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to you, Coach. We'll get back to you. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to get right back into it. Um, so we just got done speaking about the century game coach. Um, uh, at, you know, let's get your, your thoughts right after that game, you know, it's 11, one victory. Um, a couple of the guys had, you know, a mixture of emotions in terms of, you know, trying to keep things business as usual, but then also trying to make a statement that the region tournament was, was a fluke. Um, you know, Donnie kind of said he wants to score a million runs. Uh, a couple other guys, you know, were just saying, hey, we try to keep things um, business as usual. So after that game, you know, from a coach's perspective, you know, it's a big win, obviously, 11 to 1. You saved some pitching. Um, but what, what were your feelings right after that game? Um, you know, yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Obviously, being able to shorten that game was huge in game one for us. We didn't have to touch our bullpen. Um, our starter, Mike Miles, obviously, uh, we were able to keep his pitch count down just because of the number of innings. Um, but what was really fun about that game is, is offensively, um, I mean, if you go back and watch those, those at-bats, we, we were so locked in and focused, um, didn't swing at bad pitches. Uh, when we were in good counts, um, we hit the ball hard, whether we got anything out of it or not. Um, but I, I know I was exciting walking out of that game thinking, um, you know, listen, you got to pitch and play defense. We knew, I thought we knew we were going to do that, but to win a championship, you got to hit. And I felt like after that game, at least our approaches and our mindset was in the right place, which is, right. which is not always as easy, um, as people, you know, may think it is. So, um, I, I think the guys felt that too. They were locked in and. You know, when the pitchers see the hitters are going to do their job, the pitchers are going to want to do their job. And then, you know, defensively, I think we showed that, you know, right. we were one of the top defensive teams in the country. So it was a lot of fun to see that after game one. Got it. So, you know, we, we defeat Century. Um, Coach you know, moves, J.D., let me, let me, yeah, go let ahead. me add something. Sure. Uh, about when the guys were talking about Lutzi Bay and locked in. What, what the coaches knew coming in, which you guys wouldn't know, because you hadn't been there, and um, Mike and 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 Joe and the pitchers learned that the strike zone gets really small when you get to this when you get to this stage. And I think the approach that Lutz was showing toward the end of the year, and a lot of you guys, even though it wasn't always rewarded, was going to be successful when we got there. And that's why we continued to preach it and preach it and preach it. And you saw when you guys got locked in. And you made those guys come into the zone, and then you punished them. I mean, and that's what it's about when you get to the end. It's, you know, they have – the pitchers got to come into the zone. So, if you guys – as long as you guys stay disciplined and you don't – and discipline in your approach and you don't chase out of the zone, you're going to be right. successful. And Lutz was showing that toward the end of the year, and he, and he, you know, and he certainly showed it when we got down there, as well as, as, well as a bunch of other you guys also. You know, most of the guys, not a bunch. Most of you guys did. Right. All right. So, uh, you know, we, we, we defeat Century. And now we're moving on to Brookhaven. Um, you know, really good reputation. Obviously knocked, knocked out, you know, uh, a program in Tyler that, again, we, we spoke on it, talking about the at-large, you know, the day we learned about the at-large bid. Um, a program that, again, five nat straight national championship games and, and four titles. And this team knocked that team out. Um, Joe Nestle, you, you were the guy who was getting the ball. Um, what What's your mindset going into that game as you head towards the bullpen? Honestly, it was the first game, like, I've ever pitched that my mind was completely clear. I knew what I wanted to do, and I couldn't have prepared anywhere, anymore for it. Just whatever I had, I went out there with. Um, and I tried not to think about it. I kind of just went out there and – just through, man. It's just 
all kind of just came to me that day. It's just one of those days, you know. Gotcha. Uh, but we made incredible plays in the field, just tried to put them down the middle so they can hit it. And everybody was showing up to that day. No matter, like, right. everyone made a play. It was unbelievable. Gotcha. I'll go to uh, JoJo and Nick. So, knowing a tournament format, um, not that you you uh, you had low expectations for your teammate, but knowing that, you know, if Joe gets into any trouble, it's probably going to be one of you two going into the game. Um, what did you do to prepare yourselves? Um, did, did, did you have any expectations that going into that? Or it was just, hey, if my name's called, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. Yeah, I mean, we always had to stay ready. But I wanted my guy Joe to finish the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. When After seeing Joe get on, rolling like that, I was like, <clears throat> It's all you, big dog. It's all you. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Like I'm here for you. You, you need any one of us? I'm, I'm there. We just know. Like it, the floor is yours now, Pop. The floor is yours. <laughs> it all. The floor is yours. All right, fellas. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the highlights for that game, and then, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about uh, pretty much what happened there. Joe, you got the thumbnail on this video too, so you're a beast. <laughs> it's a thumbnail. Uh, it's a little picture. <laughs> As my guys, it goes yeah. in these peppers. Oh, yeah. Surprised Quezzy didn't walk out of there with a track scholarship offer. Oh my god! <laughs> There's another triple, right? That's it. Nah. <laughs> nice job by Lutz. We just got done talking about how great he did. He runs through the stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh god that oh, so easy, yeah. i'll never forget seeing that i love watching spaith uh, i don't think the yeah, see during the game you can see spaith staring them down <laughs> oh my god i remember that <laughs> yeah that was nuts Hey, McIsaac was killing it that game. McIsaac, I think he went like five for five this game. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, like I think he went five for five. Yeah. five, for five. I'm it was a good game. We're out there playing with the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dylan. What a play. Dylan. Dylan. Dylan play. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Look. Wow. And then you had to end it like oh, that. You, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, <laughs> Kazi. <laughs> All right, backwards. so fellas, it sounds like you had great memories of that game. I mean, it, it just it was one of those games where it just seemed like everything was was um was just going right for us. Um you know what? Oh, let me stop this for a sec. We'll get into that in a second. But um you know, I'll start with Ryan. Ryan looks like you had a hell of a day. Um were you just seeing the ball well or was it just one of those um, well, it I was kind of the first uh, the first game. I remember I went zero for two and I got hit in the head, and I was like, kind of like, I don't know. I just wanted to go out there and perform the next game, and right. sure enough, I was able to. I was seeing the ball really well, driving in runs, and putting up uh, some runs for uh, our team. It was a, it was a good game, all around everyone. Right. Yes. I mean, hey. you, oh, go ahead. I gotta go. Coach, I, I I'm glad you started to go to to, to Joey because I want to talk about him a little bit. <laughs> um, I, I think you could have gone to to a bunch of moments that um, that you know were were difference makers for us. But his pitching performance in that game against a really good team, I, I from all the video I watched, um, Brookhaven uh, made me more nervous than any other team in that um, in, in that tournament. I thought they were extremely talented offensively. They were balanced at the plate, um, and I thought they could do some damage. And and, and Joe through really well and they put some good swings on um if joe doesn't throw strikes and if joe changes what he's doing because of a hard hit ball here or there um it might be a different game um but it just didn't change with what he was doing he threw a slider in any count and if you guys saw what that slider was doing that day um it wasn't real fun to hit against and, uh, you know, just an, just an unbelievable performance and just calm, cool, and collected that whole time uh, against, uh, you know, in my opinion, maybe one of the, besides us, maybe the, the most talented offensive team in that, in that tournament. Joe, hearing that, I mean, you know, going, 
again, what well, it sounded like you were clear, you know, you know, kind of uh, removed from any anxiety, any, any nerves, um, you know, what, what was going through your head during that whole game? Uh, that game was, that was a while. I appreciate it, coach, but uh, what do you call it? So when Quez, I know that specifically a couple of plays where I was getting way too excited on the mound that I really like, I threw like two or three balls in a row because I was so excited and I stepped off. I was like, all right, you gotta, you gotta calm down, like relax. Just do your thing. <laughs> and um, nah, that game was, that game was unbelievable. I, uh, I was really just trying to stay calm the whole time. I remember in, I think it was a, about the third or fourth inning, I think I lost my fastball for a little while. I couldn't throw a strike with it. And I was getting a little nervous. And uh, Coach, Coach Gorman, I, think, I don't even remember, but uh, Nicole, we threw about seven, 85% sliders that day. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't throw a fastball. For and it was just all – I just kept getting the number two, the number two sign. I was right. like, all right, all right, I'll just keep doing it. And it just worked out that day. Slider was on. It just felt good. Everything was working. All right. In the Coach. fastball, Joe, if you if you guys don't remember, the fastball got really good late. I mean, really good. And uh, we were just able to go back and forth to that. And I, there was just no way I, they were going to be able to string enough hits together to beat us with what you were doing with the slider. Good stuff. I mean, I'll go from a different uh, couple perspectives here before we move on. But um, Mills and, and Donnie, you, you <clears throat> and Ryan, um, you guys are behind Joe. Uh, you know, seeing some of the plays, Mills, we saw how you ended the game there. Um, yeah. Seeing some of the plays, it looks like the defense were locked in. I, I mean, was there anything different that day from the, you know, from previously that, I don't know, just had you guys locked in? Uh, I think, I think Joe kind of set the tone on the mound. And uh, after, after I saw, I mean, after I saw, like, me and Quez, we were pl we were shading in that left center gap, and they mm -hmm. were hitting it there most of the time. That's where that's where Quez made the diving right. catch the right. wall, and that's how I got to that last ball to make the last out. I think we were, we had good positioning out there. Even Donnie was getting some balls out there, hit hard to him, but he was just good positioning. I think it was just, you know, space making good plays, middle and field. I think our defense, like, you know, set the tone – you know, or Joe set the tone, and then our defense followed up. Right. Really. Ryan, Donnie, you got anything to add there? No, uh, yeah, definitely. It's like just as much as hitting's contagious, so is fielding. You see Quez climb the wall for a ball, and you see Spade diving all over the place. Wait for you to get down. Makes you want to do your part, too. So Whatever you're doing. Uh, Coach Ryder, how's it going? Coach, Coach has the audio. <laughs> Coach. I'm uh, – I'm <laughs> – like I'm not giving out any information, just as usual. <laughs> it's either last minute or not at all. Uh, this is great. It never changes. Any guys still got your hats on backwards. <laughs> Coach, we're a family show. Duke's on the pod is a family show. Got a beer. Anyhow, Estelle, Ryan. Estelle, don't forget whatever I told you, right? Yeah, you got it. Never, never. Coach Ryder, you're retired now. You do whatever you want. <laughs> I need to change the title real quick. <laughs> Ryan, you, you got anything before we uh, we move on? Well, I mean, throughout the entire season, we we were well defensive team. Um, I mean, defense kind of wins games, and you know, if you let up with too many errors, that's how you lose games. But I felt like, yeah, uh, Joe Nestle set the tone for that game. Uh, you got Quez making diving plays, uh, Mills too, and it kind of just. Fell all in the place, and you know a seven to zero win against Brookhaven, who just uh, beat Tyler Texas, is is a very good win. All right. I mean, Joe. I'll, I'll, before we move, I'll say, Joe. I remember. I think it was a game at Camden. Um, I think you were in the pen that day, and, and you, <laughs> you came in, and I think you walked the first guy, and I think Coach Gorman pulled you. Um, and you were. <laughs> was it that day? <laughs> I don't know if it was against Camden, but I know that definitely happened. <laughs> yeah, because I remember, like, looking at you, and you looked at me, and, and we just didn't say anything. I was like, hey, man. I, I, personally, I was just going to say, hey, don't worry about it. Um, but you did just walk the first guy you came in the face. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> <I> was like <laughs> was we both know that's not what you're supposed to do. But you were ticked off. And and um, to be quite honest, to see how you finished out the year, um, you know, I was really proud of you. Um, 
So, so I'm happy for you. And obviously you're having some success at, at UMBC. Thanks. Um, and, and the last thing, coach, going to that game, were you going to ride, you know, Joe out until, you know, knowing where we were in that tournament? Um, was that a, it's Joe until he runs out of gas or you just saw something there that you couldn't, you couldn't take him out? Well, the, the, the night before, well, number one, Joe had his last two outings before that start were, were really good, if, if you guys remember. Um, you know, so we were excited about where he was. We knew um, that, uh, that, you know, that what he was capable of doing. And, and you know, did, did we all have ups and downs in the season? Short memory, right, Joe? Yeah. You know, and, and you just – you move forward. So, we were really excited about where he was. But I think our plan, um, because that was a predominantly right-handed lineup um, and a very talented right-hand uh, lineup, we thought if, if, if Joe Slider was doing what it had been doing, um, that he was going to be really tough. So, th that's what we wanted to and, – and, you know, if, if for some reason he wasn't on, we felt really good about the matchups, um, you know, with, with a subby guy and Nick coming out of the bullpen um, that was going to be a tough magic from them and obviously Jojo's fastball was just electric at this time of the year um, you know so we felt really good about that but um, the, Joe's Joe's command of his slider it, like I said not to keep going back to it we thought that if that was going to be there um, we were going to get a good seven innings out of him and that's really all we wanted and um, we, you know it just got to the point where he was dominant and um, you know we, he ended up getting a complete game for us which is always a, a, a great surprise and again something that led to to a future national championship for us gotcha so we get we get the big win um, again seven nothing against Brookhaven uh, you know it was a methodical victory you know um, and you know following that game, You've got our rival Gloucester, number one seed in the tournament, taking on the defending national champion Oakton, who many thought were were offensively really strong, and um, you know Gloucester handles it. So that sets up the matchup. You know Cumberland versus Gloucester. Um, you know I'll, I'll go to to Mike here. Um, Mike, what what's your thoughts after you find out? Hey, we're we're, we're going head to head against our rival at the national tournament. Honestly, there was no other team I wanted to face more than them going into that tournament mm -hmm. because of what had happened in the, the Final Four in the regions. Right. Uh, we had that fluke game where, again, we, we everything just went their way. And right. we had, they had beat us two times throughout the year uh, to our one. So they had the upper hand on us in, in the record, but we knew we had the upper hand as a team. Uh, and we'd seen them play all year. Uh, we knew we were defensively stronger. We knew – we were better on the mound and we knew we could hit better. We just, we had to put it all together in one, in one piece. And this week in Tennessee is really where everything fell together. Right. Like to connect to one to really get towards our goal. So we knew this was the best time to play them because we knew we had the upper hand in every, in every part of the game. Gotcha. Um, so Jojo, Nick, um, now you know at some point your name's going to get called um, at this part of the tournament. Uh, you know, we, we got to, you know, piece together the, the pitching staff. So could take me through that day. Um, you know, as players, you know, you, you try to not think about – this is, again, this is why I hate night games because you, you give yourself like 10 hours to think about, you know, the, the 7 o'clock start. So as a coach, you know, coaches, you know, you, you can probably chime in here, but – you know, you kind of just try to keep your, your routine the same. But as players, as hard as you try, it doesn't always happen. But, Joe, Nick, take me through that day knowing that at some point the ball is probably going to be in your hand. Nick, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, whoever got the call, they would have been ready. Uh, I remember that was a back and forth game till the end. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we were all going to be ready uh, no matter who it was. So. All right. That day was probably one of the, like, craziest days. I'm like, I, I'm sitting there. I remember just sitting there just talking to just multiple guys on the team, and I'm just like, like yeah, like, it, it's like, – today's the day. Like, today's right. the day. Like, they done – they did whatever they did to us back at home, but, but now is where we make it hurt. And it was going back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, 
I'm like, Jesus, like, is there going to be, is, like, is there, is there going to be any stop to this game? And right. I, next thing you know, I'm just like in the bullpen and walking back and forth and my adrenaline's just kicking. And I, I'm just, you know, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to go in whenever, like, put me in now, <laughs> whatever. Like, and that, at the time, like, as Coach said, my, like, my fastball was really live. So I'm in the bullpen and I get a little crazy out there multiple times during the season. I was just talking crap to somebody in left field, like just wait until I get a game. I remember that, but that day, that day, that day, that day was nuts, man. That day was nuts. I was just ready, you know, right. locked in. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll check in with the coaches before we get into the highlights. So I think as a group, um, uh, as a staff, excuse me, uh, you know, we, we knew we were going to have to piece this thing together to get to the, to the um, you know, the national championship game. So, uh, and I'll start out with, with, with Coach Freund here. Um, what were your feelings going into that game? Again, you know, I don't like night games, but maybe you feel different. Um, you know, what were your thoughts going into that, knowing who we faced, what we had in the tank, and, and everything, you know, under that? Uh, as far as night games, as long as the weather's not calling for bad weather and we got to start and stop like it happened to us before, right. uh, I'm, I'm not concerned about night games uh, other than maybe too much idle time for guys. Right. But uh, uh, listen, we have been here before. We knew, you know, we knew how important this game was because coming out of the loser's bracket is so difficult. Uh, but, you know, we were, we were confident. I mean, we were there. We had, you know. Coach, Coach O'Neill was at the stadium all day, every day, charting everything that we needed to know that we didn't already know about. You know, we, we, we knew them pretty well. Right. But, but they had started to do some things differently at the end of the year, mm -hmm. uh, position-wise. And, and, you know, so, uh, you know, we were business as usual. We, you know, we knew, what we, we knew what to expect at this point in the, in the, in the, in the World Series because we had been there before. And we were, you know, and we were lucky, as Coach Gorman mentioned, we had guys who were, uh, you know, who had been in the playoffs a year before in a tough right. situation against these guys. And I think, uh, you know, and, I, and, and we weren't intimidated, which is, you know, which is awesome. So. Coach Ryder, anything there? Yeah, I'm here, I guess. Am I? <laughs> You're here. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> so what were your guys. thoughts going to that game, Coach? Uh, you know, I, I think when we edit this video, uh, we're going to show uh, you in the pen um, getting yourself loose as well. So, obviously, you were ready. Uh, what was the mindset going in? Well, guys, the first thing is we have to remember why we're here today because it's Memorial Day. That's why you had an opportunity opportunity to do what you did last year. Second sure. thing is I'm extremely proud of you. <clears throat> and the third thing is it was just another day in the yard for me. That's all it was, all right. but I'm proud of you. Gotcha. Coach Gorman, uh, what do you, you know, going into that game? Um, again, yeah. staff, players, all that stuff. Yeah, you want you go back to that last game in 2018, as you mentioned, and I, I think this was, uh, this was a great example of, of our, our sophomore experience, um, our confidence, um, and, it, and it showed up. Because, you know, we thought we were, we were kind of excited about the plan that we were going to have. It was going to kind of be a Johnny Hole staff. Um, type of approach and and to be honest with you it didn't work out uh you know we, we did not play our best baseball especially early on um in that game and and that happens uh, there's not going to be but the difference between a, an inexperience and an experienced team the inexperienced team will go away and right. and the experienced team will stay in the fight and figure out a way to win and we did we did we got we had guys come in out of the bullpen that that did some things. We didn't play our best defensive game, if, if you guys remember, but it never compounded into anything that, that we couldn't come back from. And offensively, offensively, we were really solid that game. Hit a lot of balls hard in the right counts and didn't chase, didn't strike out. Um, so that game to me was a gut check. It was a toughness check and an experience check. And, and we checked all those boxes. So um, that, that was a lot of fun that day. All right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the highlights for you guys, and then um, you know we'll, uh, we'll 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 talk it over. Just like those. There we go.
You this, was, this was such a long game. <laughs> this game was like five hours. <laughs> hey, Dill. Man, we were hyped. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this Matt on the mound? Yes. Yeah. 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 Donnie? 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 Oh. Easy. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. 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 Uh <laughs> like I said, I'm surprised he didn't get a track scholarship out of this. This was this was Jaquez's revenge game right here. Yeah. <laughs> he was moving. Ant now on the mound. Yep. Ant, you can tell it's Ant. Oh. Yeah, they weren't hitting anything hard. Oh, did you get through? Oh, that was huge. I don't. I didn't want you to go there, Rye. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I kept my I, mouth shut though. I was yeah. like, <laughs> I'm glad I made it. <laughs> I mean, look at the score at this point. Yeah, this was a dog fight. I didn't put it on full screen, but whatever. Um, everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> was this the time? Was this the game where Spade made that dive and play? Yeah. Yeah. The double so, play. It didn't make it in this the highlight. Double. Yeah, somehow it didn't make the highlight. Weird. And McIsaac did the no looker. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, that was <laughs> that was a time. double play ball. Yeah. And we were out of the dugout every run. Oh my. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the end of the game. Too. All right, fellas, you know, kind of, I mean, that, that's only a minute and a half, but briefly, you know, reliving it. Um, Jojo, I think you got into it. It was back and forth, back and forth. Um, you know, again, what, what was your emotions through that? I think you got a couple big innings there late um, to hold them down. Um, again, what, what, what was your emotions going through that whole thing? Uh, well, when I got into the game, I was just completely locked in. Uh, I knew I just, you know, I had to go out there and just get three outs for my team so we could just keep it keep it going. Right. Um, you know, I just – it was just high-scoring game, you know. Just had to take mm -hmm. one pitch at a time. Couldn't you really try and do too much. Um, and really my emotions – my emotions were just try to stay as, as even keel as possible with everything going on. You know, it was just – We'll be up 10-9, uh, and then they'll come up and score two runs, and we're down again. You know what I mean? Right. So, it was like try to keep that even keel coming on and off the mound after after the first and second inning. So, it was like just had to keep that even keel. But it was, it was fun. Ryan, it, it looked like you had a pretty good, pretty good night there. Um, again, what, was, it, was it business as usual? Was it just familiarity with who we were facing? Um, you know, I mean – biggest game up until that point of the season so what were your thoughts I mean it was always business as usual no matter where we went coach Gorman always reminded us it was it was a business trip it wasn't time to have fun or anything right. but we, we knew the people uh, who we were going against they, we knew the guys we, they had we had we knew the guys they had right. um it just came down to competing and honestly when let's hit that home run I knew I knew it was going to be something special coming up so yeah, it was kind of just another day for us and you know we came out with the win yeah. Donnie, I mean, again, we keep calling you the elder statesman here. Um, biggest game of your Cumberland career up until that point. Um, yeah. Again, what, yeah. what were your thoughts going into that? And, and um, you know, was there ever a doubt in your mind that we, you know, that, that we had it or it was just, you know, was no, there was, the there was never a doubt to me. I just, just seeing how everyone acted in the dugout and acted during the entire day, that game almost had the feel – it almost felt like it had a little more intensity than the national championship game. Going into that game, it felt like that was for the national championship. Right. And uh, I left now looking at the Lutz home run because I'm, I'm the no fun guy. 
trying to get everyone to move back. <laughs> umpires yelling, and but no, it was it, it was tough to hold your emotions in during that game as as it's going up and down all day. You never you never knew what was going to happen next, and anything that could have happened happened. Right. So it, it was crazy. Uh, I mean, both Knicks. Um, what uh, what was going on there? I mean, Mills, you you were obviously you know in the field, and then Hills, yeah. you know, seeing the score going back and forth, back and forth. You had to have a feeling that at some point I'm I'm going to be in this game. Um, you know, I'll start with Millahan. Uh, Mills, I mean, offensively we're on fire. So you know, was there anything special that you did earlier in that day, or it was just you know, see the ball and hit and run? Uh, no, I think I think the only thing on my mind was just, you know, finally, you know, just beating those guys the way we should. And I think that was a great way to do it because we, we've been having tension all year with them. And right. uh, I, I just remember we, no matter what the score was, we were down two, down three. We didn't, we didn't hit that that wall to where it was like oh oh crap you know what I mean we we're like no like let we have to keep going we have Mm -hmm. plenty of game left and I just remember I just remember that game being so long and uh (laughs) it was it was probably the longest baseball game I've ever played but right it was it was definitely like probably one of the most fun coach JD yes let me say goodbye to these guys. I want to finish a project since you're yeah, go ahead. me late. All right. Go ahead. Hey, guys, thanks a lot for the opportunity. If it's not for you guys, I don't get to be part of a national championship team. Remember that for the rest of your life. Thank you once again. Hey, thank you, Coach Rock. Happy retirement. Happy retirement. For everything you do. Happy retirement, yeah. I might be back someplace. Who the hell knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be at Cumberland in the fall. See you in a couple uh, couple of months. (laughs) Good luck. Thank you. Yep. All right, so so Hills, the the bullpen. Uh, Yeah. Again, seeing the runs, you know, seeing the scoreboard light up. Um, Yeah, I mean – What was the talk in the pen? I mean, what was going on out there? uh, I was down there pretty much the whole game. Uh, Whoever went out there, I was just trying to hype up, make sure they had confidence, just tell them to get out. I mean – going back and forth all game so everyone down there knew what they had to do right um before before we move into to um the end here uh coaches coach gorman coach Freund, um again what what was was there even a approach to coaching this type of game i mean just seeing that you know whatever whatever is called defensively might not work and whatever's called offensively is going to work. I mean, how, how do you coach a game like this? Yeah, you know, I, I like I said, it was kind of an odd game for us because I, I really did think, um, you know, with the exception of a few times, our bullpen did a really good job. And, you know, either, you know, we had some bad luck or we didn't make, you know, some plays defensively. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what the script was for this. <laughs> I mean, I think the, I think the script was, watching, uh, you know, Nick Milhan and, and Donnie Stone, um, you know, really have great at-bats. And then, you know, so, you know, an extremely talented offensive player like Ryan McIsaac and, and all those guys. I mean, that, there's, there's no coaching involved in that. Those guys are just out there doing what they need to do um, and, and help get us a win. And, you know, you did see um, as, as inconsistent as we were at times in that game, some of the just great plays that we made, you know, defensively when we absolutely needed them or great at bats when we absolutely needed them. And that's what good teams really do. Um, And then to get that win and have the day off, uh, we've been in that as a program, we've been in that game twice and, um, and not getting that day off the next day is, 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 is huge. So what a big advantage for us. Um, but you know, I just thought our talent showed up at the right time um, that day and and got us the win. Coach Freund, anything to add? Yeah, but that's what somebody said earlier. I don't, I don't, I forget who it was. But every time something something good didn't happen, we turned around and made something positive happen. I mean, and that was and that was why you know we knew we were in the game the whole time. 
I mean, it was uh, – we, we knew that game was – you know, I had the feeling that that game was going to be won because the guys responded every time positively. When, you know, when stuff didn't go well, you know, guys made adjustments, guys picked other guys up with great defensive plays, kept, kept – you know, although we gave up a lot of runs. I mean, how many big innings did we give up? One? I think they only scored the three runs in the yeah. one inning, if I remember correctly. Uh, you know, and, and, and that was, you know, things that we preached as a program, you know, all year long and, you know, for, for, for years. And the guys just, you know, guys responded. Guys responded individually and as a group. It was, it was just yeah. great to watch. Yeah, I mean, I'll add a, a personal view. I mean, I, to be quite honest, I, it was one of those games where I just kept my mouth shut. Um, you know, I was just letting you guys do what you do. Um, there was nothing I was going to say that was going to help. You know, that's what my thought process was, you know, just make sure you say back and, uh, balls in the air and, uh, you know, balls in left field. Um, I think those were the only things I said that day. Um, so, but it, to me, it felt like, you know, a couple of the Eagles fans in here, to me, it felt like a Super Bowl. I mean, it was just going back and forth, back and forth, whoever got up by more than two to three runs, um, that deficit was cut immediately. And, and again, I just, I just sat back and, and um, tried my best not to mess it up. So, um, so we, 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 we grabbed the victory, grabbed the W, um, you know, then, then we get the day off. Uh, talking to the players here, um, during that off day, um, was, was the game, the next game on your minds the whole time, or was it just a, Hey, let's get away from it for a little bit. And, and um, you know, then we'll get back to it. Um, I think we had a um, BP later that evening. So um, obviously we had to lock back in. Um, I'll, I'll go to Ryan here. Uh, Ryan, what, what were your thoughts throughout the off day? I mean, we were on a roll, so I wanted to play the next game as soon as possible. We were doing great. Um, I mean, I'm, I remember that off day, we went and watched the, uh, uh, what was it, Brookhaven and uh, RCGC yep. game. Yep. And, you know, Brookhaven was dominating the entire time until uh, RCGC we came back and won the game. And as I was sitting there, I was thinking, you know, I wanted, you know, you kind of want Brookhaven to win, you know. I wouldn't say easier opponent, but, you know, we beat them 7 nothing. But then again, I was thinking, you know, this series we've, is tied 2-2 right now uh, throughout the entire year with the RCGC. Right. So being able to play them one more time is something, you know, just to end the year and end the 2019 uh, season would be nice. And that's what happened. And, you know, we're national champions. So it was a, it was a surreal moment. Right. Uh, Mike, I mean, you were <laughs> slated to be the starter. Um, again, what, what's going through your head, you know, during the off day? Well, I had uh... – I just came in to, to throw the last pitch of the game before, so I knew I had to do a little bit of running that day, actually. I had to do some, do some running, mm -hmm. do some stretching, roll out, and uh, drink a bottle of Pedialyte, some pickle juice. Don't forget that. Uh, courtesy of Coach Gorman. <laughs> we were um, big on Pedialyte. <laughs> but, yeah, I just had to, I had to make sure my body was ready. I didn't want to just, like, lay around like a couch potato all day because then you kind of – you lose the momentum. You, you get a little tight. So I made sure to stay moving around, stay – Stay flexible, right. jog a little bit, just keep the mindset ready. All right, we'll we'll, we'll go to to Milhan and, and Donnie here. So um, again, you, you guys, <laughs> you know, our left fielder and our right fielder, knowing that um, you know a couple of pitchers aren't unsure, but at least with you guys, you knew you were going to be in that game. So what uh, what's what's going through your head during that off day? Um, I guess you know who obviously like who we're going to play next and, you know, just taking advantage of the off day, you know, it's, it's always an advantage getting some time off. And I know RCG, they, they were playing all day. I knew that they were going to be throwing guys and stuff like that. So once we watched that, that Brookhaven game uh, versus RCGC and I think somebody hit a home run or something, it was like maybe a walk off. Mm -hmm. After, was it a walk-off that game? No, nah, I think it was a go-ahead in the eighth type of thing. Go-ahead? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then they sealed it. Yeah. I just I just knew that was going to happen. Like, I knew that they were going to do that. And I knew it was just going to be us two because, yeah. you know. Just how it's going to work out. Yeah, that's how <laughs> it was going to be. I just knew it was going to happen, regardless of what the score right. was. 
Donnie, you got anything or, or Mills kind of yeah. drilled it? No, I mean, it's you're at the national tournament, so it's it's tough to really remove yourself at all because you're all you can think about is the game coming up or, or, or what's going to happen. But, you know, you, you try to relax a little bit. I watched a, a Game of Thrones episode in the hotel, drank, drank my Pedialyte like everyone else. But uh, I think I think selfishly a little bit, I really wanted to play RCGC because, right. uh, you know, because of what happened yeah. in 2018 and, and – my my like personal feelings on the game. I, I hit into a double play that ended the inning right before the walk off, and it's you know stuff like that selfishly makes you want to beat RCGC against like to win it all. So I was quietly rooting for them to win that game. I wanted to play them the next day, and it was exciting that we got to, and I think it was meant to be. Nice. Uh, before we move to the actual game, I mean, coach, you mentioned Coach Gorman. Uh, you mentioned that, you know, the two times we were in the World Series prior, we, we never got this off day. So, um, you know, your first time trying to plan that day, you know, <laughs> were you trying to, you know, get the guys away from it? Or, you know, were you a little um, anxious to make sure they didn't do anything that would, I don't know, harm them or at least take them away from focus uh, for the next for the next day? I mean – um, I think we had discussions on what do they eat, what do we do, or we don't, you yep. know, gas them. So what, what's your mindset going through that day and trying to plan the day for the program? Yeah, as, as happy as I was, and you guys know because we were all in that conversation, as happy as I was to get that off day, it completely turned into to sheer panic um, and, and started thinking about, okay, I don't want to feed them this in case they get food poisoning and just imagining all type of uh, worst-case scenarios. Um, on right. a day off. Uh, I don't want to take them bowling because somebody could tweak their elbow. So right. there, was, uh, <laughs> there, was a, there was a million different things that we went through um, and uh, it all ended up being okay. I didn't, uh, I wanted them to get away and enjoy themselves a little bit, but obviously I didn't want to put us in a spot where, um, you know, we were going to get hurt, uh, right. you know, either. So um, I, I know that for me, it, it seemed like the longest 24 hours I've ever had in my life. Um, I watched uh, a lot of film, uh, looked at a lot of charts. Uh, I really, uh, I, I don't know, I was kind of in kind of a daze and, and uh, <laughs> all the while just concerned that the guys were, were, um, were eating the right things and, and you know, and, and safe, which, you know, it, it's just something that we worry about. And, um, but it was really a huge wow. thing for us. And also from a pitching standpoint, we were in a really good spot to begin with pitching. Um, having that day off just put us in a, in a, uh, you know, in a different category. And I don't think anybody there had our depth uh, in, you know, as a pitching staff anyway. So, um, you know, it was really advantage us uh, as, as long as, you know, um, as long as we got through that day healthy and safe, nobody got the Michael Jordan food poisoning. <laughs> Um, you know, we, uh, try to keep that. I mean, personally, I think that when we were in, when Tyler and, and I was already thinking, like, if we get the off day, I want to take a ride to Dallas. And um, I think the last time we were in Tennessee, I said, I wish we got the off day so we can go to Knoxville. Then we, we actually get the off day and I didn't want to do anything. I was like, everybody stay safe, stay in your rooms. Um, you know, I think we went out to, to the pool. Um, you know, our host family. And I was, I didn't say anything at the time. I was like, I don't know if this is a good idea. Um, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, so it was pretty funny. Like you said, the two, two times I wanted to, you know, kind of experience the area and then, then we actually get the day and I didn't want to do anything. I don't, I don't want to talk about the pool ever again. <laughs> <laughs> we may, we may edit in the, uh, the jackknife that you threw in. Um, I wish, if I, I, wish if I can I find that clip. Time. I wish I had a video going off of it, Coach Gorman going off. Oh, I, got oh, I got it. Yeah, I got it. No. <laughs> I got it. So we may edit in. We may not. I just got to make sure the language on the thing is clean. Um, so now we're in the national championship game. Um, you know, I'm just going to play the uh, play the highlight here, and and uh, then we'll, we'll we'll chat about it. Yeah. 
and there goes was that them mm -hmm. yeah. cause i remember our first what was it our first like five batters or something yeah, like that first, i think six got on first six yeah and there's the who started the game for them i uh, think it was by by cielo yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. there's lutzy again and then and the then yoder first pitch there's and lucky baby like, See all the litter go over there. <laughs> Digging Vinny. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Oh boy. Nice. Nice spot, Mike. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good <laughs> pitch. That was a good pitch. Is it? It was off the plate. That was Donnie's ball of the way, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I question some of the uh, some of the outfield play this series here. I, I did tip that ball to Dylan in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan had himself a night. Yeah. He did. Yeah, he did. Unfortunately, he got called into work, so couldn't hop on. Um, what a slide. <laughs> Donnie, big double here. No, double no, play. Not yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> double, one double. I hit swear you hit double, Donnie. That was the first inning, I think. It was the first inning? That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. There it is. Oh, boy. Okay, let's talk about nice. this. Yeah, Everybody. we're going we're gonna to get into it in a little bit. Uh, okay. Well, right. let's <laughs> Look at Tris. Yeah, from, from row 12, section 12. <laughs> no. One of the first ones out there. Man, that's crazy, man. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, fellas, we're going to go right from the start there. I mean, Mills, you said it. I think the first six hitters got on without an out. I mean, what, what, it, you know, Donnie, you, you know, you hit that inning. Mills, you hit that inning. I mean, Ryan, obviously, what's going through your head as, as all that's going on? Yeah, you oh, know, I just don't want to be the. You don't want to be the guy who doesn't get on. Like you, <laughs> you want to keep the string. <laughs> and, and, uh, I remember my first at bat. He was just he was pounding sliders. I got the two strikes, and he just kind of left one over. I was able to hit it, but. Uh, Right. Yeah, you just don't want to be the first one that doesn't get on when everyone's rolling like that. Right. Ryan, you get, you got on as well. I mean, what what's well, going I mean, through your head? I mean, we well, we scored six runs the first inning or something, yep. something yep. like that. And I knew it wasn't going to be good enough. It, it's RCGC. They're a great team. Just going to find a way to get their way back. So just by scoring the money, trying to score as many runs as we could just to make sure that they hadn't didn't have a chance to come back. So. You know, it was a little bit jitters. It's a championship game for us. I mean, so just being able to get uh, driving runs, you know, it's kind of just, yeah. Mills, you, you kind of commentated a little bit. So, uh, yeah. what's going on there? Yeah, so after that happened, after the six runs in the first inning, from that point to how we were playing in that tournament, I knew they weren't going to beat us. Like, straight up, I knew they weren't going to beat us that game. I knew they were gonna. I knew they were gonna pull something out of their hat. They were gonna put up, maybe you know, make it a little close or something. But I knew they weren't gonna beat us after that first inning and how we responded right away. All right, uh, Coach Mike, uh, Coach, Coach Gorman. I mean, watching that inning, you know, um, were were you kind of fighting yourself, thinking, you know, this is gonna be. Obviously, as coaches, you think, you know, nothing's this easy. But are, are you fighting that feeling? Like, we're, we're, nothing, you know, we're a buzzsaw. And nothing's really going to get in our way. Um, Coach, Coach Froyan, I'll, I'll start with you. Oh, Coach, hold on, I got you. Yeah, I got you. Uh, no, I felt, I felt a lot like, uh, like Mill Hands. This game, this game's not over. Right. Nope. Hold on. Vic Vic subs is struggling Sorry. right now. There All you right. go. There you go. Sorry. Uh, you got it. I don't know if you heard me. I felt like I I I knew the game wasn't over. Right. I mean, I liked obviously like the way we started out the game. I like I like I heard Donnie make that comment in the dugout actually in the next inning. I think when he came in from the outfield, he said I 
I just didn't want to be the first guy to make an out. Uh, I, I remember him saying that in a dugout. And I thought, you know what? I said, that's the mentality we got to have. I, you know, right. it's, it's not pass it on to the next guy. Like we said, you know, pass it on to the next guy. But, uh, you know, actually, you know, feeling confident, but not, but knowing the game wasn't over. Right. Coach, I mean, going to you here. Um, again, are, are you fighting a feeling? I mean, I, knowing that you had Mike on the mound on, you know, it's called three and a half days rest. Um, were you relaxed? Were you, you know, obviously as coaches, you're, you're never that relaxed, but, you know, getting that six runs in the first inning, I mean, what do you, are you fighting any feelings of relaxation or again, are you just going at it as usual? Nothing, nothing game. Yeah, it definitely wasn't relaxation. I mean, I wanted to score a hundred runs. So <laughs> um, that, that was, that was my only thought, but just looking at that first inning, I felt really good about it. And to this day, there's two at bats that I, I think about in that first inning. And we had really great at bats in, in that first inning. But I think about, uh, you know, whether it was a, a curveball or a slider moving away from Milhan, he drops it into the right side to get a single. I thought that was huge, um, you know, to get us into a big inning. And then obviously kind of sets up, you know, for, um, you know, they're working lots away. Um, you know, right on left match up there and, and Lutz just kind of goes with it and just gets the barrel on it and gets an oppo home run. And I just kind of felt like that's the way our tournament had gone. We were just really doing a great job um, of, of hitting pitches where they were pitched, really disciplined at the plate. So I felt really good. And, and was I comfortable with the six runs? No, again, I wanted 100. But, uh, you know, I, but, you know, a six run cushion for, for a guy like Mike Miles, um, and, and for our pitching staff was, uh, you know, was, was a huge bonus, huge. Right. Um, to, to add in my personal note, um, as the first base coach, I was just hoping to get no one picked off. Um, that was, <laughs> that was pretty much it. Just make sure no one gets picked off. And again, keep your mouth shut and just point out where the ball is. Um, Mike, uh, getting that cushion there. Um, what, What's going on? I mean, I, you know, I just asked the coaches, you know, were you relaxed? Um, I'll ask you the same question, getting that cushion. Are you still nerves-wise level, or are you just a little bit more relaxed going into that? Uh, I, I kind of – I'd say I was pretty settled. I mean, I was excited more than nervous at that point because, like, our, we had just put up six runs in the first inning, so my blood was pumping, but not in a nervous way, right. more of a – okay, I got to go out there and do my job kind of way. Um, I'll be honest, though, like, it going out there on, on three and a half days rest wasn't the easiest thing. Mm -hmm. But the fact that the guys put up six, I knew they were going to keep hitting. I knew they had my back. So I wasn't as worried as, you know, like, as if it was a 0-0 zero -zero game, I wouldn't be like that. But, uh, no, I knew they had my back the whole time, so I could just go out there and do my thing and really not have to worry about anything. Um, I'll go to the pitchers here. So – Ness, I, I know that you had a, a complete game early in the week. At any point, did you feel like, hey, I'm, I'm good? Were you going to go to the coaches and say, hey, I'm good to go if you need me, uh, knowing that Mike was on short rest as well? I think I told Coach Gorman a couple times, and he kind of he was like, all right, all right, like, all right, you're fine, like, relax a little bit, relax. Right. But uh, I remember telling him at least once that, like, yeah, if you need me, like, I'm I'm good to go, like, I can right. do this. But um, no, nah, I was always. I was always pretty confident. I just – it's a national championship game. Everyone wants to get in, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, nah, but I was confident we could win that game with Mike, yeah. Mike and everybody on the mound. Like, no matter who you put in the game, we're winning that game. It doesn't matter. Um, JoJo Hills, I mean, same question. Um, again, you guys pitched, you know, a day and a half ago. Um, so what um, – you know, what JoJo, what were you – were you ready to go? Um, were you unsure? Uh, obviously was I ready to go? <laughs> was I? I think I think I was I think I was throwing a bullpen from what the fifth inning, sixth <laughs> inning. I was in there. I was in a bullpen. And I'm sitting here. Right. I, I'm, mind you, I'm I'm completely like separated from the dugout. It's just right. me and I got Dom. I got Dom out there. So I'm just I'm just throwing. <laughs> I'm just walking back and forth. And to me, so, honestly, it felt like I was just throwing harder and harder as the yeah. innings went on. So I was just ready and just being out there. And I'm just like. Boy, 
I'm, I'm, just, I'm just imagining <laughs> you were hoping to get in the game so you don't have to be with Dom in the pen anymore. Um, I mean, I, I mean, he was he was he was jawing my my ear off. Like, Dom, like, Dom, we're in the seventh inning, Dom. We're in the World Series game. Like, come on, get down. You got to catch my fastball. Hales, I mean, it, it was definitely crazy. <laughs> Hales, I mean, I, I felt like the whole week you, you were you were throwing, you know, getting loose in almost every game. Um, yeah. You know what? Again, were what were your emotions going as, as the game kind of went on and um you know we did get that big lead but you know as, as ryan kind of alluded to you know gloucester was going to chip away so um you know having that understanding what what's going through your head in the pen um you know what do you got well so i mean the whole staff was ready to pitch whoever whoever he called and they were going to go out there and so uh i mean we just had the most confidence and whoever was on the mound at the time that was mike and as long as he's doing his job, right, one of the win. So, you know, going through the game, I mean, Mike did hit, skidded a little bit midway through. Um, you know, he had some, I wouldn't call it control issues, but he was just missing some spots. Um, you know, Gloucester got a couple of hits. And, you know, unfortunately, in certain points, we, you know, Mike gave up a couple of walks. Um, Ryan, Nick, and, and Donnie, you know, being behind Mike and, and seeing him struggling, I mean, What's going through your head there? Again, it's it's a national championship game, and, and you kind of want to nail it down in game one. Um, you know, did you ever feel like it was added pressure at the dish to, to kind of get some more space, or um, did you feel just overall pressure defensively, offensively? I mean, what what are the emotions? I mean, we're up by a lot, and, and now that lead's kind of dwindling away a little bit. Um, Nick, I'll start with you. Um, what, what's what's going on in the middle innings? Um, I mean, honestly, from what I remember, I was still pretty confident. But um, I do remember Mike, he dropped his arm slot a little bit and went sidearm mm -hmm. for, I think, what was it, the last, like, three three yeah, innings, maybe? Yeah. And um, <laughs> I was like, okay, he's going to he's gonna figure it out. Like, his arm's probably, you know, hurting. He was pitching a lot. And I, I – told myself he's going to figure it out with the sidearm stuff and right. just put just make him hit it and I knew our defense was solid enough to you know have his back even when he didn't have his best stuff I right. I was confident in everybody out the whole nine so I was I was I was not right. I, I didn't feel pressured but you know it was still you know a little yeah. nerve-wracking Donnie same feelings or you just Cool, yeah, calm, collected. Um, one hundred percent confident in Mike, uh, but I knew as an offense, we had to we had to keep putting up runs no matter what, no matter how well Mike was pitching. Um, I remember a little bit later in the game, I wasn't someone who said a ton in in group huddle type stuff, but I did bring everyone together in the dugout, and and all I really wanted everyone to know was we have to leave no doubt. Like that was all I said was you can't you can't keep them in the game at all because if you do they're going to find a way to come out we all know they're a good team so uh we had 100 percent confidence in mike but i knew the offense had to just keep keep putting on as many runs as we could yeah hey ryan i mean as an infielder you, you got a really good look at what mike's doing on the mound and his spots and everything. was there ever a doubt in your mind you know seeing where you know where he's missing or or you know you know, I kind of got at Mike a little bit, you know, with, with the, that outside fastball. Uh, but I, everybody chimed in and said, hey, it was a good spot. It was a good pitch. So, uh, you know, what were you feeling, you know, during those middle innings, uh, you know, I seeing mean, Foster kind of chip away? I mean, I remember, like you said, he did walk a couple guys. I do remember that. I remember Coach Gorman came out to, in, to get in the huddle uh, in the, on the mound. And you could tell Mike was a little bit tired, you know. He pitched, what? so many innings and um I remember coach Gorman gave him a stern look and I could tell he uh, Mike wasn't coming out of this game and I knew that when, with that look and everything that we we had a chance you know I never had a doubt that we were going to lose that game uh -huh. you know but the six runs in the first inning we just kept attack, uh, attacking on runs and you know and yeah so you know it, it kind of just came down to uh staying focused uh you know we got the six runs in the first inning but just staying calm, cool, and collected, and 
came out with the championship. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before before we get into the end uh, of that game, um, coach, you know, I, I or both coaches really, Coach Mike and and um, Coach Gorman, you know, during those middle innings, I, I felt like we met as a staff um, almost every inning to discuss what we wanted to do with Mike. Um, Coach Freund, I mean, you know, you've been here since the start. What were your thoughts in terms of, obviously, final word is going to Coach Gorman, but what were your internal feelings as what what we should have done with Mike? Listen, I was in on those meetings, and I, <laughs> and I remember – I remember from the first two times we were there, whenever Coach Gorman would ask me before a game or during a game what my opinion was, it always, he always did the opposite. <laughs> so uh, either I'm wrong or uh, either I don't know yeah. what I'm talking about or, you know, it was, a, I, don't, I don't know what the deal was. So I just, <laughs> when, it came, when it came to the pitching, I just listened to him and Coach Yolers and, I, you know, and Josh, yeah. you know, I stood next to Josh all game and listened to what Josh had to say. So uh, I just uh, I just stood there and listened. I didn't, uh, you know, I wasn't gonna put I wasn't putting my two cents in because I didn't want to say something do the opposite and cost us. <laughs> <laughs> so, coach, again, ultimately came down to you, to your decision. Um, yeah. You know, again, it, you know, Ryan said you came out there and and gave Mike a look. So it sounds like you were pretty set on what you wanted to do. But what led to that kind of thought process and decision? Well, it. it there was really only one point in that game that it got a little nervy. Uh, you know, Mike, Mike may have lost his legs a little bit for, for, for that period. We walked a couple of guys. We still had a three run lead. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously a single puts them back into with one or, you know, something like that. So we felt really good. But the reason I went out there to talk to him is we had a really good matchup. And, and uh, I don't know if Mike remembers that. But, um, you know, Coach O'Neill and I had talked about at some point we wanted to drop Mike down in that game um, and almost go exclusively from the side because with Mike's size um, and his ability to still throw the baseball in the upper 80s from a sidearm slot um, against a right-handed lineup that was, that was a pole right-handed lineup, you know, we really liked the matchup. I had a ton of confidence in Mike. I know – um, you know, it's a national championship game. Everybody right. gets a little tight, a little, little nervous. I also had a ton of confidence in our bullpen. Um, just it was a matchup thing. That's all it was at that time. Um, and then, uh, you know, he really made some good pitches. Um, you know, you could tell he kind of got a little spark back um, when we got out of that inning. And, and really, they didn't do anything to him after that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think the one, one thing is when, when you're in a, a championship fight, um, you know, you got to kind of go with the hot hand and, and we thought Mike had the hot hand and we thought he was going to lay in the knockout punch and, and the way our offense was going and the way we were doing defensively, um, you know, there, there wasn't any doubt there, but, uh, but really just a, a, a tough gutsy performance by Mike, um, uh, you know, and, and, you know, the, the athleticism, the ability to completely change his arm angle in the middle of the game, um, was a huge weapon for us and I don't know that it was a secret weapon but not everybody had saw it and uh you know really the difference um you know in him being able to throw a complete game in that national championship game uh Mike dropping down there um confident where were, were you um was it suggested by the coaches or did you suggest it and, and it kind of turned into a conversation or hey Mike this is what you're doing and and you know Go from there. No, I actually started uh, before I even came in that year in the fall. I sent him a video in the summer mm -hmm. of me just messing around down there. And he was like, you know what? I, I, I kind of like that. We, we might use <laughs> it here or there. So that's actually where it started from. And uh, in that mound meeting, I actually remember the exact words. I, I looked at him. I said, I said, I'm tired. He said, you're not allowed to be tired. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, here's the new game plan and we're going to go for right. it. And I also remember Vinny looking at me and go, there's no time to be tired in this game. So I honestly, without the support of the guys, like my brothers in that dugout, like everyone yeah. tell them, I have my back, tell me, like, you got to keep going. You got this, this is your game. Without that, I, I, I kind of say I probably wouldn't have finished the game because they gave me that extra boost. Like, you know, you, you got this, man. Like, you got us here. You helped get us here. Like, we got your back. We're going to keep scoring. Just get outs. Let them hit the ball. We'll make the plays. Like, we got your back. 
So it was just, it was just kind of like that, and, you know, it worked. Before we move on, it, this is just a curious question, and the answer is probably no, but, you know, with, with Nick being a, a submarine guy or a sidearm guy, did he, did he provide any guidance throughout the year, especially during that night? No, man, I just told him I throw harder than you. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for it, Mike. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. I didn't, I didn't tee that up. Um, so now, now we're, we're in the late innings, and, you know, Dylan drives that ball into the gap, and we kind of extend the lead. Um, you know, I'll kind of keep the same format here, the position guys, Nick, Donnie, Ryan. Um, you know, you keep saying there's no doubt, and, and we were confident. There's no doubt we're confident, you know, on, so on and so forth. But at that point, you know, was it kind of sinking in a little bit that, you know, we kind of got this in, in the bag? Or um, was it, hey, until the final out, we're, never, we're not going to feel that way? Um, I'll start with Ryan. Um, well, uh, it kind of stayed the same throughout the entire uh, game. I remember – they changed pitchers that inning. The mm -hmm. the one that Dylan – he actually drove me in because I remember Coach Gorman told me to steal on the first – I think it was the first pitch, first move, just go. Right. It was, it was against Matt Stills. I remember that. Yeah. And after scoring that run, it just – it it sunk in that, you know, we're doing something really special. Um, Literally, what, what was it? The uh, late inning, seventh yeah, inning around that time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was – it was got, it got to the point where, you know, we're about to do something amazing that – it's never happened in Cumberland County College history. So it kind of it, – it's it was a surreal moment, and it sank in, and it was it was great. All right. Mills, I mean, seeing what was going on there late, did it, again, did it sink in, or were you fighting that feeling? All right, so this is when it sunk in for me. I remember I was at the plate. I think Dylan hit, like, a double or something, and I was going to sack him over to third. And I remember this – I forget who was on the mound, but he threw me like a like 90 plus mile an hour fastball at my head. I was trying to pull back on the bunt and it somehow hit my bat and went straight back to him. And I remember Dylan was running the third and this kid just completely overthrew the third baseman. And then Dylan went to score and I got the second. I think that's when it really hit me like, yeah, this team's going away and we're, we're the team that's going to, you know, outlast them. I'm going to be honest, I, I kind of forgot about that um, Yeah, because I, I, it was such a garbage play by you. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> terrible, and I worked. just completely erased it from my mind. <laughs> like, terrible, completely awful play by me. And somehow it just it came into my favor. I was standing on second base and I was like, you know what? Like, this is our day. This is I dis a, I disagree. Um, I disagree. Okay. Not a garbage play at all. Yeah. Nick Mil Nick Milhan, the baseball gods, rewarded him for <laughs> uh, for staying in his box all the time, getting <laughs> sacrifice bunts down, getting ba bump for base hits, sticking his nose on the base all the time. The uh, that was exactly the right thing that was supposed <laughs> to happen. Nick, don't ever don't ever tell that story a different way. Baseball gods rewarded you, Coach. Yes, I thought sir. you were gonna I, I thought you were gonna call it a Milhan play. Which uh, I felt would be a little bit more disrespectful because they're the line between a mill hand play and a garbage play. It's very <laughs> <laughs> Donnie. Uh, I mean, you know, Nick says it was that play. I mean, w did it ever sink in in game for you, or was it, you know, let's get the last mm. out? There's always that thought, like in the back of your head, that you know this could really happen, but it's you're so locked in pitch by pitch and. You know, that, that game's almost a blur to me. Like, I remember the first inning, and then I remember the last out. Everything was just – everyone was so locked in, and you're so focused that it's it's tough to think about anything else other than this pitch right here or this play right here. But um, I was confident the whole game. And then once, you know, the final out that, that Nick forcibly had to catch over, over Quez. <laughs> uh, Which we'll get it into. Was, it was the <laughs> crazy. It was nuts. All right, so let, let's let, let's get into that final inning. Um, you know, Mike, I think you got a – I'm trying to go off the top of my head here. I think you got a strikeout and a flyout. Um, so there's two outs there, and, I, you know, a runner gets on, um, and then a pop fly. Um, normally, you know, Matty Spath comes up with that thing, and, and, uh, but it was just – I felt like 
not defending Maddie, but I felt like it was a, like a hair too far for an infielder, but then a hair too shallow for an outfielder. A play that should have been made either way, but um, you see that first ball go up. W- what's, what's the emotion there? Oh, uh, well, I saw it go up, and I'm backpedaling slowly towards it, towards it, like my gloves off my hand. I look over at Galante, and then I see it hit the ground. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, back on the mound. Just like yeah. <laughs> it was, it was just like that. It, it wasn't like a, an aggravating moment because well, that that kid's faith made so many plays for me all year. The amount of runs he saved, like I, I couldn't be mad. Like yeah, it was a high pressure situation, but like you said, it kind of just blew to the perfect spot. Yeah. There was no like. I had, like, short-term memory. It's gone. Next guy, here we go. Gotcha. Let's go off the field here. I mean, Nick and, and Joe, I think you were in the bullpen at that time. And, and Ness, I think you were in the dugout. Um, let's go to the bullpen to start. You see that ball go up. What, what's – I mean, are you at the gate ready to go? Or are you, like, until he catches it, then we'll fire out? I was ready to start running. <laughs> uh, All right, the, Nick. Nick left. Nick. Nick was out there. Nick had a vi- <laughs> Nick had a video, and I'm and and the, and the end of the video, you see me running from the bullpen. Yeah, and I'm just running, and I just dive right into the right into the uh, yeah. the pile of everybody. It was nuts. <laughs> Ness, I mean, going in the dugout. Um, you know, you, you kind of see the ball go up, and I remember uh, just about everybody was out of the dugout, and then I saw the water cups fly. But then the ball hits the ground. I mean, what's what's uh, what's, what's the dugout feeling? What's what's going on there? We were like, yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> next one, with next one, next one. Fill yeah. the cups up again. We'll we'll get the next one. Yeah. Was, was there a jinx feeling, or was it just all right? We're gonna get the next one. I mean, we kind of. I think I was sitting next to Brian at the time. We're all kind of like, wait, do we? You throw these water cups out. <laughs> <laughs> and we we're like, nah, 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 we'll get it, we'll get it. We'll be um, Mills, Ryan, uh, you know, Mills and Ryan, that play pretty much happened right in front of you. Um, you know, what again, Mills, Mills for you, I mean, that literally happened right in front of you. Um, you know, what were you thinking? Were you like Spade Scott it or, you know, I mean, it was like I said, it was just in a weird spot. So, you know, it happens right in front of you. What's go- what's going through that there? Definitely a, a tough ball to get, but um, I, it was it was definitely more a space ball because I was playing deep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, go ahead. Space, kinda, but it was it was night and space kind of lost it, and yeah. I just I I kind of knew that wasn't gonna get caught. Okay, like, I don't know what it was. I just kind of knew it wasn't gonna get caught because it was more, one of those tweeners. He nice. didn't really hit it too high. He didn't hit it too much on the line so it was, yeah that was a that was a tough play I remember I was like oh god when yeah. when that happened I was like man we, we can't let that happen again <laughs> Ryan uh, you know as an infielder you know it's one of those plays especially when you play second base just one of those plays where you're, you're just not involved and Donna you can probably add to this as well you know just a play you're not involved um you know I, I'd imagine you guys are ready to to, to dogpile but you know, what's going through your head when that ball hits the ground? Well, I mean, I remember after we won it, we were heading back, and I, I was sitting next to Spath on the van, and I turned on and was like, if you caught that ball, you could you could have made the last out of the 2009 <laughs> series. And he's like, yeah, I know, and I don't, I don't want to talk about it. But it was kind of just like, you know, you get back to the position, it's whatever, stay focused. Mm-hmm. But um, he made so many great plays throughout the entire year, okay. so, you know, the – it was kind of more of like a simpler play for him to make. And, you know, I just joke around. Me and him are great friends, but it was kind of just, it drops, all right, you stay focused. You know, when you make an error, you don't let it get to you too much because it's going to keep piling on and on. So, yeah, it was kind of just get back in position and let's get this done. Donnie, same thought? You know, just next play? Yeah, yeah, pretty much the same, same thought. I know, uh, like, game one of the year, and I, I'm playing right field, and I told Quest, right. I was like, any ball that goes in the air, like, you think you can get it? Go get, it. go get it. <laughs> Being the weak link in the outfield, yeah. so so that ball went up, and the first thing I'm doing is looking at Quez because I know I have falls on the other side of the field. I see he's not going to get there, then you know Space and Mills aren't going to get there, and I'm like, all right, all right we got to we got to hold on for one more out, and then yeah, it, okay. it was it's, it's kind of like you got to refocus yourself a little bit because it's easy to get get a little bit too excited when the game's not over yet. Right. 
All right, so literally, I think it was like two to three pitches later, um, you know, the fly ball. Uh, you know, we'll get into the situation we're talking about. Uh, we've mentioned a couple times in a little bit, but um, I'll start with – I'll start back in with the bullpen. I mean, you know, the Hills, you got the video. JoJo, you're there. You know, you, you see uh, Millhan squeeze it. I mean, do you guys go blank? Do you black out? Or, you know, as you're running in for the pen, it's like – this actually happened instant blackout <laughs> instant instant yeah. blackout from the from the run from the bullpen to to the mound i don't even know if i like i think that was the fastest i've ever ran <laughs> <laughs> mass you're in the dugout i mean what what happened you know take me through what happened there <laughs> i was uh i got caught in the fence a tiny bit i was one of the last people to get out um but i man I remember throwing the water up and just being on the bottom of that pile. And it was, it was unbelievable. Uh, like, it was crazy. So much fun. Yeah. Um, Ryan, Donnie, almost identical plays. You know, you're not involved. So, you know, you see the ball go up. Obviously, trajectory looks like it's going to get caught this time. Well, again, what's – where are you at there? Donnie, we'll start with you. Yeah, no, off the bat for sure, I thought it was caught. And then – I'm looking over at Mills and Quez, and they're both going full force towards it. And then I immediately start thinking the worst, that they're going to collide. And I'm starting <laughs> to sprint to left field, thinking that, like, I'm going to have to prevent an inside-the-park homer or something. Right. And uh, I didn't even realize Mills caught it. I thought I thought uh, Quez caught it. But then I saw Mills, like, with the ball, and <laughs> I blacked out after that. Like, JoJo was the fastest I ever run to the middle of the field. It was crazy. I'll, I'll make a quick comment. Um, Donnie, you were one of the last of the pile, and I never knew why. I didn't um, know what happened. I didn't know where the ball was. <laughs> now, we, now we know. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, um, you know, pulling up the video, you know, you're, you're not subdued, but you just throw your hands in the air. I mean, what's, what's going through your head? I mean, off, off the bat, the ball looked like it was hit pretty well. Like, it was in the gap, you know, so – all of a sudden, I said, you don't hear ball, ball, ball between uh, Quez and Mills. So, you know, right. you, you might think, as Donnie said, they might collide. And all of a sudden, just see Mills jump right in front of Quez. And then that was the game. And I remember running, throwing my glove in the air, running towards the pile and yeah. taking out Bromley right into the pile. <laughs> I remember that's, a, that's the thing I always remember. Out of all people, I, I saw Bromley and just took him out and we went right under. <laughs> it, was a, it was a bit of a and, Yeah. Mike, um, I'll take another dig at you. Uh, you threw that ball right down the middle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good spot. But uh, jokes aside, I mean, you see the ball go up in the air again. And, it, again, we've been saying it just looked like it was supposed to be caught. Um, you know, you, at the start of this thing, you said, hey, I pitched in two state finals and, and I came up short. Um, does that run through your head as that ball's up in the air or is it just complete blackout? and? Uh, you know, all that. I was actually thinking, like, if he catches this, like, what do I do? Like, I, <laughs> I didn't know I didn't know what to do. And then I had taken care of my glove so much all year to where it was pristine condition. Right. And I think I threw that thing to the moon once Mills caught it. It landed over near first base where Vinny was. <laughs> then all of a sudden, I look over and Galante just hits me. Right. And then I, <laughs> I hit the ground. All of a sudden, I'm at the bottom of the pile. And – I don't even know. It was just like a surreal experience to where like I actually refused to watch the replay of the game for such a long time because I wanted to remember it from sure. that experience, not a broadcast view. Yeah. And it was just – it's just something you'll never forget. Um, before we get to the coaches, Mills, you cut Quez off. Uh, <laughs> Was so, that something you wanted to do? Like, I, look, trust me, I, mean, I, I imagine you wanted to get the last out, but, um, you know, did that just happen or is that, you know, jokes aside, was that something you really wanted to, to take? So let me clear all this up. <laughs> <clears throat> We're both running for the ball, right? And, right. you know, at first, at first he we both are calling ball. We're like ball, ball, ball is in the middle of the gap. Right. And then as it's getting towards us, all I hear Quez say is, Mills, you got that. Like, Mills, you, like he, he was saying, Mills, you got it. 
And I remember oh. he told me he was just running through me to make sure that like he didn't hit me. Cause like we were getting kind of close. He kind of stepped back. He was like, like he basically gave that to me. And I remember, okay. you know, right after I think we were on the van or at the hotel or something, he said, he said, you know, I wanted you to get that cause it's your, it's your last year. And right. I, I was just like, wow. Like, Thank you. That just shows that just shows like how how it, how like our team was, man. Yeah, right there, honestly, like it just shows it. Was, it. Like just real selfless energy out there, and I never forget when I caught it, I kept running to my left, like in disbelief, like what just happened. Like, <laughs> I didn't even go to the dog pile to the very end because I was <laughs> looking at Quez. I was like, Quez, what did, what just happened? <laughs> And then we eventually got there late to the dog pile. Right. And I remember everyone was, oh, get off, get off. <laughs> it's so funny, but it was awesome. Um, all right, so the coaches, you know, we'll, we'll go back to the first pop-up. Um, you see that go in the air. Uh, I, I, you know, going back to the video, I don't think any of us moved. Um, Coach Freud, what – you see the ball go up in the air. What – what uh, you know what's what's going through your head, and then ultimately the ball drops. Uh, Mills Mills hit on it earlier. I knew if if Spade's not getting that ball, it's not getting caught because Mills. We had him back. You know, we had him back most of the game anyway, if not all of the game. Right. And I knew it was it, it, it he wasn't going to get to that ball. So if it wasn't going to be Spade, it wasn't going to happen. Right. Go now, down. Well, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't know Spade wasn't going to get there. You know, I didn't, you know, I couldn't tell from where I was in right. the dugout whether it was, uh, you know, whether it was catchable or not. Gotcha. Gotcha. Coach, same thoughts or, you know? Yeah, Maddie makes that play 99 times out of 100. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe more than that. Um, just one of those funky, miserable things in baseball sometimes. Um, you know, the ball had a ton of top spin. It was a mid range, you know, kind of a weird little thing. Um, you know, we had a really commanding lead at that point, probably a little bit of a loss of focus, you know, um, you know, ready to celebrate. And again, right. it's just one of those weird baseball things that embarrasses us all the <laughs> times. And um, I got to be honest with you, I haven't even thought about that play, you know, not even for a second. So, you know, again, three, four pitches later, you know, we, 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 we close up shop. Um, you know, Coach Freund, what, what's – I mean, what, what are the emotions like? I mean, what, what's going through your head uh, or was it just blank? Well, uh, I'm going to agree with Coach Gorman. I never – I hadn't even thought about that play, that, that, that ball that dropped until, you know, until I watched it on replay the, the, the third time. Right. And then, uh, and then I've forgotten about it since. Now, the, the next pop up, uh, until I actually talked to Quezzy this year, and Quezzy told me the same story Milhan just told. Oh, so it's corroborated. So, I didn't want to yeah, say it. Yeah. I was going to call. Oh, well, I'm going to corroborate it. And I, and, okay. I, and I still, I still didn't know Milhan caught the ball. Right. You know, I, I didn't see him catch the ball. I, I saw the cups go up, but I saw them go up already once in a, in a misfire. So, I mean, wow. I, I was not aware that the ball was caught. I had my eyes were locked on Quez. And then, uh, you know, and then wow. after that, it was, you know, it was, it was blank. It was... So coach, coach Gorman, I mean, you're, you're, you know, you took this program over um, probably when it was in the basement and, and then obviously where it ended up. Um, does that run through your head or are you just staying in the moment? Yeah, there, there was a lot of range of emotions there. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, some of that's for me, you know, right. um, I, I, I've, uh, I, you know, it's funny, Mike Miles said that I didn't watch the full game from pitch to pitch until the day before we got our rings in, uh, in December. So, um, you know, that, that was a special thing for, for me personally, uh, for all the players, we, we just, we spend so much time preparing together, not just this group, but for years and years around there. And, um, uh, you know, that, that's, what's always been special to me is the amount of work that we put in together out on the field. Um, 
you know, whether it's the most fun times or whether we're just trying to get through a day out there, um, you know, you know, all that time is validated from, from that last out, you know, and, and uh, when in the, when in the final game and these guys, as they get older, will figure out um, and realize, and I know they already do, but they'll see how much more special this was. Just not many people are ever able to win the last game of the year. And, uh, and it's something we all fight for on a daily basis. So, um, yeah, a lot of emotions there. A lot of them I don't know that I'll ever share with anybody. <laughs> but uh, um, just really proud of those guys and, and um, just thankful for them, thankful for the work they put in. That, that allows uh, a person like me to go along with them. Awesome. Um, all right, be before we close up shop, you know, we're, we're going to go around round table here. Um, and I'm thankful, uh, you know, Mike, uh, you know, we've got a bunch of two year guys here, um, you know, guys that went through that walk off loss in 18 and then, you know, grew up to be national champs in less than 12 months. Um, you know, we'll start with Ryan. What's your takeaway during your two years at, at Cumberland and, and, um, you know, if you were to pick one or two points where it kind of turned the corner for you and said, Hey, these are guys that I, that I care about and, and, um, you know, remember forever. I mean, it was, it was a great to be a part of this team. It's probably been the best team I've ever been a part of. Everyone was locked in. Everyone wanted the, the end goal of winning the national championship. You know, we were, yeah, we were brothers on the field, but then again, we were brothers off the field. There was never any, you know, uh, chirping going on between us that caused us to have any controversy or anything so being able to be a part of this team I always remember it for the rest of my life it will always be engraved in my brain and I'm, I'm proud to call myself a Cumberland County Duke awesome Donnie what do you got yeah no a lot of what uh, a lot of what Ryan just said um I mean, it was obvious early on how much talent we had but I think the thing that really separated us was just how close we were as a team. And I think a lot of that comes from like living together in the greens where there's not a lot going on, but, uh, you know, some of the best memories of my life are, are with those guys. And I think it's going to be like that forever. I need some of my, my best friends on that team. And, you know, it's, I'm just really thankful to be a part of it. Gotcha. Nick, we'll go to you next. Hill, Hillshine, Hillshine, not Millian. Hillshine, we'll go to you next. Yeah, definitely. Uh, best team I was ever on. Uh, the best two years of my life. Um, one of the one the glad I ended the, my baseball career that way. One, one that, right. you know. Gotcha, Ness. I mean, you're 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 experiencing some success at, at UMBC. Um, you know, obviously before everything got shut down. But um, what are your thoughts about your two years and and you know experiencing the NCAA Division One level um, now? I mean, comparable you know, different? I mean, what what are your emotions about your time at Cumberland? It's really just, like, I've never been on a team that was so close together. Like, we all may not hang out all the time, but every time we talk, like, it's not, like it's like we never picked up, you know what I mean? Right. Like, uh, like we never fell off. But um, going to going to Division One level, it's really, like, you really can see the guys who came from Juco and the mm -hmm. guys who just went right to the four-year um, the Juco kids really just have a different connection between each other. And um, I really see that from our team, like teams around the country and everything like that. But, man, these – like, any of these guys, every time I talk to them, we we'll always go back to that moment, like that national championship, or, like playing together. It's like the coolest thing ever. Like, I would do – any of these guys ever want to talk, hang out, man, i drop everything just to hang out with these dudes. Best dudes I ever played with. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mike, I mean, what's, you know, you, you, I think we recruited you hard out of high school. Um, obviously you chose otherwise, but you know, you got kind of got a, a second chance at a career at Cumberland um, coming in as a transfer one year guy, you know, you kind of said at the beginning of this that you were accepted right out of the gate. Um, you know, talk about your time as a Duke. Uh, well, I, I don't really have regrets, but, uh, I wish that I would have looked at the JUCO route more seriously at high school. Mm -hmm. uh, being a late bloomer as I was, I kind of wanted to play at the four-year 
immediately just being one of those mindsets no one had really told me otherwise I didn't really realize how how advanced the juco level was I'd probably say I played better competition in juco than I did the four year and that's not me just blowing smoke uh you face guys that are there just to try and get drafted at juco's like they go there because that's their goal they're, they're good enough and um my year at Cumberland I I made like uh, steps and strides that I could have never thought about making in my baseball career uh, due to the, the program and how it was run and the guys around it, like everyone pushed each other. Cause it, the Juco life isn't, isn't uh, like something you dream of. Like it's not, right. like, it's not a dream scenario. It's something that you work hard in so you can have a better opportunity <clears throat> elsewhere in school. Right. And that really showed in everyone and how bad they wanted to go play somewhere else and how hard they worked. It was, it was just awesome. Right. Um, Nick, I, I think you were one of the first uh, commits, you know, class of 17 guys that I, I think you were a winner commit. Um, you know, I, I think we only had a couple, maybe a couple of guys before you, but you're one of the first. I mean, is this, is this something you envisioned um, or was it a, hey, I'm going to go to Cumberland, kind of improve and then move on to, to a four-year school? Was this experience what you, you uh, anticipated? Uh, coming into it, no, because my, my senior year of high school, I didn't do too well. And, you know, the game of baseball kind of got to me a little bit. And, uh, you know, I had some second guesses, but Coach Gorman, we had a long uh, conversation on the phone. I think it was about in August, you know, when I wasn't too sure. And I remember he just said, hey, you got the rest of your life to do what you want to do, but you don't have – you don't have much time to, to play your years of baseball left. Right. Like they're limited. So I, I kind of took that advice and I went into, I went into Cumberland with an open mind, just, you know, just go out there and just play hard and see what you can do. And um, I think it really worked out. You know, it definitely worked out, you know, and it made me gain a whole new love for the sport, being around a bunch of guys that I love and a bunch of coaches that, you know that know what they're doing and just everything just everything just fell together and like perfectly almost it was right. it was crazy I mean other than that tire falling on my foot and <laughs> <laughs> a couple other mishaps definitely other mishaps yeah. but it definitely made me grow as a person you know gotcha uh coaches sure. uh, be before we we close up with Jojo coach we were we spoke about Millahan's uh um rebellious state during the early parts of the winter where he kept trying to practice with a boot on. Um, Coach Freund, uh, I brought it with, with Mills. That I think both of us had run-ins with Nick um, regarding keeping him off the field and, and out of BP. Um, Coach, is that something that was frustrating about Nick or was it lovable about Nick? Uh, oh, I wouldn't say lovable. But uh, it, 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 it was frustrating, and it was expected. Listen, he's right. a tough kid. He's a competitor. I mean, you don't want kids who get hurt and go away. I mean, that's right. that's not what we like to see. I mean, and that's and that's Nick. You know, right. you know, you got to protect. You know, sometimes you got to protect Nicks from Nicks. You know, and that's <laughs> and that's you know, it's hard. It's hard for guys to understand that, and right. you know, we understand that they're young. Gotcha. But, gotcha. Um, all right, to close it up. Jojo, you're, you're a violent kid through and through. Um, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the hometown team. And not only that, you're playing a big role in it. Um, did that ever occur to you or was it just something that, Hey, I'm, I'm a baseball player and I just happen to be at Cumberland. Uh, I mean, honestly, like, uh, I didn't really get recruited at, at high school. Like, too crazy. So when I seen right. Coach Gorman, just talked to Coach Gorman, gave me the whole lay down of the program. I was just like, you know, this is this right now. I was it felt like out of high school I was just playing baseball. You know what I mean? It felt right. just like I like in high school I was just playing baseball. But when I went to the JUCO route, or Coach Gorman talked to me, and I'm just like, all right, well, this can turn into something else. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I just kept working hard, and you know, baseball became more than just baseball, really. And just being around these these group of guys really changed me because in high school, you know, I went to Bond High, 
a lot of people say a lot of people has their opinions about Von High, but you know, being I mean, being around a group of guys like this is just nonstop work hard. I mean, I remember there was day in and day out. It was with Mike, Nick, everyone going to the pit working out, and I'm just like, all right, well, this is this is what it's made of. So and just ever since national championship and just year one, they've been my brothers. So I just love them all. I'm always here all right. for them. Uh. You know, before before we uh, end the recording here, I mean, I'll go to the, the, the coaches and I'll probably chime in as well. I mean, what outside of the championship, um, Coach Freund, what's what's thing you remember about the class of uh, class of nineteen? Ah, oh, jeez. You know, it when you were saying what you, you know what you guys took from this program, and I was th- all I was thinking was. Each, each group of kids that comes in, you see different things you see. And with this group of guys, you saw guys that pushed each other. You saw guys, who, all, multiple guys who wanted to lead. You saw, you saw guys who had each other's backs. I mean, we saw that around here once before. I think, you know, I know back in 2014, it was a 13, 14 team. And it's a special thing to watch. And, and you know, what I take from this group is a bunch of guys who trusted each other, who trusted the process, who worked hard and got rewarded. You know, like coach said, there is, you know, there's baseball karma and these guys and these guys earned everything they did. And it was great to watch. It's great to be part of. Um, I mean, my two cents is, um, you know, I don't know if any of you guys are are basketball, college basketball fans, but I, I just hearken to, you know, UVA's NCAA men's basketball team where, you know, they're the number one seed going into the 2018, you know, national or not national, the NCAA tournament, and they get bounced in the first round. And, um, you know, I felt like for us, that was us in, in the region in tournament in 2018. Um, a lot of promise, but maybe we just didn't know how to conduct ourselves as, as a national contender. And I think – that loss, the same way the loss that, that UVA experienced, um, I think it made all of us realize that, hey, talent isn't just what's going to get you through. And, and uh, for me, that's the thing with you guys in the class of 19 and even some of the returnees like Matty Spaeth, Anthony Maselli, and, and so on. Um, I think we all learned something, not just baseball, but not to get weird, but in life, like, hey, you can have all the knowledge and information in the world, but um, you know, you guys kind of taught us that you got to have the want and the uh, resiliency. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's where I'm at. So, um, you know, before we go to coach, if any of you guys want to stay on after we stop the recording to chat a little bit, you know, by all means, I know it's Memorial Day. So um, if you want to stay on and keep the room open, but uh, coach, we'll, we'll end it. Coach Gorman, we'll end it with you. Um, lasting, I don't want to call it a legacy, but if you want to call it that, you know, what's one thing that class of 19 kind of left left with you, the program, and, and, and the community? Yeah, I mean, I really agree with what everybody said. But, you know, for me, the special thing for me is is watching the journeys of everybody involved in that program. Um, all of these guys that were either with us for two years or with us for one year, there was, uh, there was a journey that they made. We were all here for different reasons, coaches included. And, um, you know, the awesome special thing is to see how we changed, developed, and adapted um, to each other uh, so that we could be special. And that, that's exactly what happened. And, and um, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't know that I'm always around a group of ball players, but this was a group of ball players. Um, and, it, and it was fun. What, you know, at, at times – um, through good times and, and through times that weren't as good. And the times that weren't as good were never that bad. Um, but the times that were really good were, were special and also historic um, for this college. So um, I'll always remember the journey that all of us made together. Um, and and uh, that journey led to, to winning the last game of the year. Okay. Love you, boys. Awesome. All right. Uh, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that, that concludes our, our players roundtable for a uh, special edition of Dukes on the Pod. Um, there will be a part two, which will be a coaches only uh, Dukes on the Pod. So we'll uh, hopefully we can stay uh, 
on the, on the right path when we have that uh, round table. But um, I just want to say, first off, it, it is Memorial Day. Um, so, so thank you to everybody who, who have served us. Uh, you know, Coach Ryder got into it. I don't think we had this experience without you all. And, you know, this, this particular uh, meeting doesn't happen without you. So, so thank you, everybody um, who have served our country. Um, you know, thank you to the players. Uh, thank you for you guys taking time out of your day. Um, this, I think we could have gone a little bit, we could have gone for a few more hours just talking about random things that went, out, went on throughout the year. Um, <laughs> but, again, taking time out on a holiday, um, thank you. Thank you to the players. And, and, and Coach Mike, uh, Coach Freud, and, and Coach Gorman, thank you again. Um, so to everybody listening, you know, thank you for taking the time. And uh, look out for uh, the, the Coach's Roundtable. Thank you.